It's my duty to please the booty. And Musk got mad at me, the coach said, he goes, Jesus Christ, why don't you just wear two nines? And I went, okay. Ah, ah, switch to call. Please, please, please never do yeah, that. I, yep. So. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 480 of Spitting Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka here in the Barstool Sports Podcast family. How we doing, gang? We have a legend returning to the NHL, a team on a legendary run, and we have Goofy, Dumbo, and Dopey down in Orlando. Let's go to Goofy for a piss. Your team is fucking with you. The island is a huge move. We got to dive right into it. Back yeah, and we got Tyrone Biggums up in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Butch Goring is bending me over at this point. Holy fuck. How, hey, listen, Ari, I know you had the big movie premiere that we're going to get to, and that kind of got bumped back because of all this fuck crazy that, news. Yeah. But speaking about movies, the NHL at this point with Dog has to be fucking scripted. It's a, it, This season, Gary as I Bettman said, it's straight out of Hollywood. Is the Wizard of Oz at this point. This is fucking nuts. <laughs> Not just the Patty Waugh news. But then your Oilers adding Corey Perry. I think we should try to stick on topic. My mind's going a million miles an hour. Let's start with the Patty Wah news. I don't know if you have anything formal to announce about it, RA, but this is just, I don't think anybody in the world saw this curveball curve ball coming other than who, this janitor that's been DMing Merle's? No, I think it was a border worker. So for people, well, all right, why don't you just, why don't you just go into the actual yeah, news? Set the table, yeah, set the table, baby. Merle's is, the, Merle's is the angriest human alive oh. currently. <laughs> Well, you know, Saturday was hockey day in Canada. Well, of course, every day is, but it was an American team that stole the fucking thunder. The New York Islanders, they fire Lane Lambert only one and a half seasons. That's it. They replaced him with the one and only Patrick Wah. Hasn't coached in the league in eight years. He just won the Memorial Cup with the Quebec Grand Pots. Uh, Lou Limerow said it was the only guy he called. He didn't talk to anybody else. <laughs> he just called Patrick Wah. And Patrick said he he, he said like he kind of fucked up when he, when he quit the Avalanche. He acknowledged that he try to make a power move against Sackick and he wanted more power for well with the roster and shit. And that's why he didn't get any calls. And then he kind of did his penance. He, you know, went back to juniors and now he got the call for the fuck on the Islanders. Now he's back. Uh, he went out Jack Adams, his first time at Colorado, then he was in the playoffs once. And that was it, man. Biz, this is the hugest story. I think, oh yeah, nobody saw this coming. We've been talking about Pat Watt replacing this, this fucking coach, that coach, whatever. Like how much of a shock is this? First of all, in, is, is this going to be able to work? I mean, he's got a heavily veteran team. He's going from a bunch of young kids to a bunch of old guys. This is fucking fascinating right now. This. Well, I'd say the biggest shock is the fact that Lou Lamarell listens to the Spit and Chicklets podcast because not too long ago, we had Pierre Cedric <laughs> Labrie come on and he was vouching for Patty Wass saying that he's really looking for his second opportunity and he's a changed guy. It's funny that he did go into it a little bit as far as talking about the incidents in Colorado where maybe he was trying to step outside of his boundaries as opposed to coach and figure out what type of personnel to be. And now I think that as a head coach, you should always have a say in that type of meeting, right? Like you're, you, you've been around Stanley Cup winning teams where you know that what personnel is going to be good for you winning in the long run with maybe, maybe it was maybe coming in a little too hot off the start. Well, I think what happened was he went there. He won the Jack Adams. They got in the playoffs. And then the next two seasons, they were horrible. I think one of the years they were the worst team in the league. He ends up resigning. Now the resignment. It, it was tough. It was August like 15th or August 10th. So, I mean, the season's coming up. You got everything planned. So it, it, the way he went out, he's made it openly clear that that was like the main reason he didn't think he was getting a look for a while. But he was also the vice president of hockey operations in Colorado. He wasn't just the head coach. So he had a little bit of a say in things. And then at some point he oversteps his boundaries and he probably didn't like where Sackick wanted to take the team. And all of a sudden that power struggle became such an issue that teams over the course of the next eight years, when his name possibly got mentioned up, they're saying, we can't be dealing with that, right? Like, this is a loud personality. This is a fiery guy. It's funny. He, I don't mind the odd fuck you match, but I don't need no, him every day in the office. I don't need him every day, and I don't need him telling me that I can't play these two defensemen. It's like the coach's coach. The GM's built the roster. Figure it out from there. You said it. You need teamwork. You need some stability within, but you cannot have a guy, and it's too difficult to coach in the NHL. That was another quote, quote, uh, quote by Wah. He said, I now have kind of learned what it takes to be a successful coach, how much time, how much planning, and effort Effort. They don't have the time or the ability or the wherewithal to be able to be dealing with other front office things. So I think it's going to work out great. I really do. I think the fact that he is a fiery guy is what the Islanders need. I don't know Lane Lambert at all. 
and and maybe he wasn't like this in the room, but just seemed a little vanilla. And I know we've seen him explode on the bench a couple times, but you now have a guy coming in that is, and here's the best thing, the tweet I saw, the division, the coaches in that division. <laughs> we got we got Patty Waugh, Mike Sullivan's been known to lose his mind. Brenda Moore's been fined about 400 <laughs> grand by the league. We got Lindy Ruff, he may end up getting gassed at one point, right? Who knows? I don't know, Pasha, sorry, you're in the room. We, uh, uh, who else is, who's in the Rangers? Torts, Torts, we got Torts. I would even say Torts. If, I, if, if I'm New Jersey, I'm gonna get Barube right now. Cause you're, not, you're gonna oh, need hey, him hey, to hey, go hey, hell in the cell You're, you're gonna need him to fill in for the Leafs here, I think possibly, Ben. So let's slow your roll. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Hey, Hey, Leafs ain't gonna do <laughs> nothing. Oh, right? Leafs ain't gonna do no, nothing. But but back to Patrick Waugh, I I think even though it's been eight years, I, in terms of his quotes, it seems like he's learned a lot. And you, you always get that first go around. You're excited. You think you know everything, and then you take a step back. You don't get any calls for a while. You're coaching again. The team has success, and he was really disappointed. We didn't get the Columbus job. He was up for that Columbus job. He didn't get it. I think he was probably crushed by that and thought maybe that, that was it. I don't know. And boom, Lou comes flying in over the raft, <laughs> out of the rafters, over the top rope, and he just threw an absolute wrench into the entire NHL season. I, I wonder what sparked his mind to not only just like go talk to Patty Waugh, but the fact that he would only talk to Patty Waugh, thinking that that's the answer. His quote was, he can flat out coach. And I think, I think part of it is how crazy and and, and, and intense he is. And with this team, yeah, it's older veterans. They got all these older guys signed to long-term deals, but he needs some fire in that room, bud. They they have no other option besides being all in on trying to get in the Stanley Cup playoffs. If you get in, we saw Florida last year go in the run. Anything can happen, especially this season. God knows. Just get them in. They they can't. They can't. Like, it's not like they're like a younger team. I'll wait till next year. No. We got to go on this route. We got like three, four years, they probably feel like. And he's going to be there for the long term. This isn't just a quick hire. Patty was a New York Islander. Now. I, I don't think he's as much as a wild card as everyone thinks. Too. I mean, I, I don't think. I think if you. I think pulled, he's a snapshot. I think if you pulled like I don't know a hundred thousand hockey fans, maybe ten people would have guessed that they would have fired but, him for. But Patty he Wall. was interviewing with NHL jobs this summer. We did that interview earlier this summer, where where it was uh, he almost got the Columbus Blue Jackets head coaching job. Right. So it's like he has been in the race and almost getting head coaching jobs. It just hasn't been that public to, the, to everyone. I would have guessed that Lou would have stepped behind the bench before he would have had her, hired Patty Waugh as the head coach. But now saying this, some people are like, oh, well, whatever. They just got a new coach. Like nothing about the personnel is going to change. I think he's going to be able to turn this group around. And if they're a wild card team, man, I don't think it fucking matters. I could no. see I could see a Florida type turnaround where they, where they, they just end up getting in. They hit their hot streak in the second half of the season. And what's the one thing that hasn't really been there like it was last year Sorokin and fuck you don't think Patty Waugh is going to call him in the office and instill that confidence quickly back in him so he can get to that level and also I don't know how many people saw clips of that first practice like you know they're doing battle drills left right and center he's stopping the drills talking probably saying we need even more intensity here and if there was I, I, I think it was Adam Foote and, and a few other guys we've had on the podcast who played with Colorado when Patrick Waugh was there, and he was very much involved about the structure of the team and yeah, the defensive zone. Yeah, it wasn't zone. just a goalie that's just chilling in the crease. He's into everything. I think he roomed. I think he roomed with Adam Foote when they were on the road, despite being veterans at the time, and they would go over defensive zone structure as opposed to, hey, if the puck is here and this is what you think the guy has, this is where I want you guys positioned. This is where I want the shot coming from. So to be able to, to communicate to the players and maybe even Sorokin how that all works, that's just such valuable information and, and, and something that a lot of coaches wouldn't be able to explain to their, to their team. And the other aspect of, of Lou being comfortable with this hire, like, He's a guy that runs all the hockey. He runs the show, hockey operations, GM, everything. He's doing it all. So he knows Patrick's not going to be bitching to me. I'm not the guy you bitch to, Lord Lou. No one fucks with him and his decision. So I know he's going to coach. They probably made that pretty clear in terms of like that being a conversation around all the media writing about Wah being hired. It was very evident that he's open to now knowing I have no say in the roster. I'm going to coach the shit out of this team. The other crazy thing about Lou is he hires Canadian legends to coach his teams. He hired uh, Larry Robinson. He hired, who else did he hire um, at one point? Jacques Lemaire. Jacques Lemaire. Yeah, Pat Burns coach for him, correct, R.A.? 
He was in yep, Montreal, yep. right? So it's like there's some sort of connection there. Who knows if and, that's just random. And, but. and I believe Patty Waugh was coached by most of those guys of the, of the list that you just mentioned yeah. of guys he hired. So there's a lot of connection there, and I'm sure a lot of communication. And maybe as you keep talking, it makes more and more sense why he was eventually the guy. But it is weird, and, and we've talked about the Islanders this year, that like their power play was horrific for years. Now their power play is humming. A lot of that has to do with Noah Dobson, who probably hasn't been mentioned by us along with the rest of the league this year in terms of how good he's been. But then what goes hand in hand with a bad PK is a goalie not playing great. And Sorokin hasn't been himself, right? Like if I believe Sorokin deserved the Vesna last year and, and obviously end up giving it to um in, in Boston there. Uh, Allmark. Allmark. Allmark, which, you know, the records and, and their team, I understand it. But Sorokin was the one thing with the Islanders. You don't worry about that. And then if Wah comes in, like you say, and he pumps him up and he talks about, hey, listen, I've watched your games. This is what maybe I'm seeing. Like, how much easier is it for a goalie, I'm guessing, to listen to a Hall of Fame goalie talk to him? It's so different. Most coaches aren't goalies. You don't, you, you, the head coach is probably like, hey, I'm just going to stay away. Like, I don't know what to tell you. And, and Anders Lee was, was interviewed. And of course, he's like, everybody in this room knows how big of a legend this guy is. So automatically, he walks in there and has all of their attention and respect. And even just like shifting towards the back end, too, you mentioned Noah Dobson. They have been banged up a little bit. Like Mayfield missed a little bit of time. He, he's, he's a clock muncher, really good at blocking shots. Pelic, is he back in the lineup now? I think like, so. I, I mean, he'd miss, I mean, a decent amount of significant time. So they haven't really been been able to to have every guy in the lineup on the back end at one time so that ha i mean that hasn't happened for too many games so that's going to be a huge boost and getting them in the right direction and you can't forget about that uh that addition not too long ago of bobby you know or tuzo so yeah so, so he's you, on the if, IR. if you think of common yeah. themes of successful teams in most recent playoffs winning stanley cups it's big defense and big back end and that's what they got right now and that's if you're if you're an Islanders fan you have to be all horned up cuz cuz even like even if like I look at who can compete with the top teams in the east and if you ask me who the top teams were right now I think a lot of teams are very much even keel at second I think that Florida is the best team in the east right now I think Bruins fans have a legit gripe that nobody really considers them the best when they've been the best all year but Florida yeah they're a different animal the way they play but back to the Islanders quick Pulak's on the IR, Bertuzzo's on the IR, Varlamov's on the IR, Sezikis is on the IR, Engvall's day-to-day. -day. Get those guys back. I mean, those are all legit players. And how much could they use Varlamov right now with Sorokin maybe fighting it a little bit? So it's an exciting... Well crazy saying they're an exciting team. It's an exciting situation, right? You've talked about how boring they could be, but that's kind of how they have to play with, with the, with the personnel they have. But Wah behind the bench, he's going to change some things. And there's no doubt you're going to see an immediate impact because the way he's so intense, like these guys have to answer the bell. They have to, and they know, and his quote was, every game's a playoff game. It's a little bit of a cliche, but we, we're sitting on the outside. Like, we can't be looking at this last 38 games, whatever it is, as, as chill time. No, we, this is playoffs for us. They'll probably have to, they'll probably have to be on, at a 700 clip the rest of the way to get in. So you know that it's, it starts right off the bat and they play tonight, don't they? Yeah. They play in Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dallas, and, 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 and then start. even crazier, G, you had this tweet. They're playing at the Bell Center on Thursday. Yep. Like, come on. Like, come on. <laughs> the, script, the, script, the script continues. Yep. And how, how many days do they have off in Montreal so that all the media circus can continue? This is amazing. Whatever, whatever they're doing to plan this out, this is amazing. This is big. This is bigger than the NFL Taylor Swift and, and Kelsey, Kelsey drama. Um, but you, but before the before the announcement, I mean I don't know if I've seen a fan base, maybe Jersey, as loud oh, about yeah. firing the coach. Like the Islanders fans, they could not stand Lane Lambert behind well, the bench yeah, anymore. Look yeah. who you had before him. You had Barry Trotz before him. It's like, and they fired Barry Trotz for that for this guy. And like, and people thought it was going to happen a lot sooner. And that was in the ha first half of the year, maybe a little bit early on when they kept blowing these leads. Where that's it. hey, third period leads with Barry Trotz. They it's get, over. They'll fucking put your nuts in a vice, man. Straight anaconda chokehold. You ain't getting shit in the third <laughs> period. And also. The, 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 it's, it's not the, like for Sorokin, it's the high quality scoring chances, maybe more so than they were with Barry Trotz and sticking with the goaltending conversation. Like you're always going to need pieces up front to add a little bit more offense. I would say that that's the Islanders been, that's probably been one of their issues in recent memory. They, I mean, where they lose that Eastern conference final to Tampa one, nothing. Yep. They just, they, 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 they need those big goals with it. 
could they maybe come off of Varlamov being a, a, an unrestricted free agent in the offseason where you have this valuable goalie and teams are so fucking desperate? Think of how many teams right now that are in a playoff picture like who are so desperate for a goaltender. I mean, I know the fucking Leafs are. So you're saying <laughs> trade Varley? I don't. I, I'm saying if Sorokin in, in the next month can get back to looking like him, and it's, it's never a bad thing to have a, an insurance policy in net, but think of the type of return you could get for Varlamov as far as a positional player and maybe a guy up front, like, you know, probably you'll probably get a really good third line player who can help contribute offensively know, though, and man. add it. But if, if you're grabbing him, you're not, it's those teams aren't trading like guys that are important to their lineup. They're trading draft picks and process. I don't, if you're trading Varlamov right now, that's a team who's trying to get in the playoffs, need some depth and goalie. They're not going to give you a piece. They're going to give you a future aspect of right. a future. Th- I, I know what you're saying. I'm just trying to kick up dust too right now. You're just I'm trying try- to get him a little more offensive firepower. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it, it, it's it, funny. It, it certainly made for an incredible storyline around the league. Like the fact he comes back mid-season, and of all people, it's a Lou Lamorello wires. And he goes with from the beard and the press conference to being <laughs> clean shaven on, on the ice. I mean, so Don I, I never, do we ever get the full story as to, to why that is? And does does he view it as during the season you're going to shave, and then if you make the playoffs, you've earned the right to grow a beard? Is that kind of the mentality behind Lou's uh, shave? I think if we're going to try to sit here and and get inside Lou Lamorello's head, we might never leave Orlando. <laughs> That's that's it. like who knows. Well, he what subscribes to our YouTube channel. Yeah, maybe enough, we should just enough. maybe what we should up, just Luke? reach up. That was a that was a, a Yankees rule biz uh, uh, for a long time. They still don't allow facial hair or hair below. Yeah, but so so so, so yeah. is it documented that he inherited f- from from Steinbrenner? Like were they boys? I, I, were they dabbing I mean, each other it, up in the streets? Were, or, I think those franchises were affiliated a few years back. I, I it might have something to do with it. Plus, I mean, he's an old Italian guy. I mean. Probably thinks it's like ungentlemanly to have a fucking beard or some crazy shit like that. Do you think he had Either to way, tell Patty Wa, or do you think it was like, do you think he had the conversation like, hey, dude, you got to shave? I, I would is- imagine it was a segue out of the, hey, I'm not having fuck you matches every day in the office about personnel. Oh, yeah. And here's a Bic razor with some <laughs> shaving cream. Get that fucking beard <laughs> off your face. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just crazy too. Like, fl- like, like, think of the French goalies. You got Marty Brodeur with the wins record. Fleury passes Patty Wa, and then all of a sudden, boom. From the ashes, Patty Watt back. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of wild because, uh, you know, a few months ago, oh, goalies aren't a big deal. You don't need fucking great goalies. And now they're, they're the hottest commodity in the league right now. Guys, we're here. And you know what time it is. It's Pink Whitney time. Yes, I'm holding the ball. I'm kissing the bottle because we're down in Orlando. And you know why we're down in Orlando? We're here for Pink Whitney night at the Orlando Solar Bears game. We did it once. It was amazing. The amount of feedback and love we got about this drink was incredible, a little overwhelming. So I just want to remind everyone, if you want to go have a drink, if you want to relax after a long day, if you want to enjoy your day at the beach, if you're down south, if you want to enjoy your day at the mountain skiing, some nips in the ski jacket pocket or a big bottle in the cooler on the way to the, the beach. The 1.75s, they're available. 1.75s are available. Those big dogs are humming around. And so, like I said, mixed with a little soda water or on the rocks or as a shot, it doesn't really matter. But as long as you're willing to give it a shot, I promise you won't be disappointed. The hangover can hurt, but all hangovers hurt. And you know what you do when you're hungover? You just have a sip the next morning too, baby. You know, that's, that's the trick. A little, what's the, what's the term? Dog, the dog's hair. Hair of the dog. Hair of the dog. dog. I knew I had it backwards. But Pink Whitney, New Amsterdam Zone, because of them, I think it's where we're at. And we love them. And we love you for giving it a shot and drinking it if you're a regular. So please check it out. Wherever you buy your liquor, check it out. Whatever bar you go to, they're sure to have it. So thank you. Thank you all. Pink Whitney, New Amsterdam. Biz, uh, a lot of coaches on the hot seat right now. Uh, The other night, Dallas was in New Jersey. They beat him up 6-2. to It was Sergey Brila night in New Jersey. He won three cups with the team. The performance was so bad, the fans were cheating, chanting, sorry, Sergey, to a three-time cup winner. Uh, Lindy Ruff snapped at the reporter, Ryan uh, Novozinski. That, that, that was brutal. That was a Yeah, a li- little sensitive there. He was he was grilling yeah. him about, uh, what was it, Alex Holtz. And I believe Alex yeah. Holtz had just played around 10 minutes. 
And the guy was like, why aren't you playing Alex Holtz more? You know, he's because he has looked good at periods this year. Uh, Pasha, Pasha's in the corner. He's giving me the head nod. I thought that he's definitely progressed his game since last year. After he being- tied the game up in the third period. Yes. And then Lindy basically said that he threw a pizza up the middle. He Before was- the goal, though. Per- yeah, I- hey. So it's like, all right, <laughs> dude, like, uh, sorry to interrupt. No, no, you ju- jump in. It's you seem passionate like, about like, it. Well, 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 the problem was the way he talked to the reporter. He's like, oh, yeah. well, you don't, you obviously don't watch the game. <laughs> and it's like, well, actually, even if I don't know X's and O's in the game of hockey, like a 30 year NHL head coach, what I do know is the guy tied the game up. He's one of your offensive type players, especially with all the injuries they have. You need more goals and you're benching him for a play he made before the goal. Like, obviously you weren't that mad that you threw him out on the power play when he ties it up on the one timer. It's two, two, then they're down and he doesn't see the ice because of a mistake in the second. And then the way, uh, Lindy's talking. He's like, you know, he throws it to the middle. We don't need to throw it to the middle. Well, I ended up, uh, uh, there was a Devils fan who found the clip. He threw it to the middle and just missed the, I think it was a defenseman. He was trying to hit cut knob. They got a chance. There wasn't a goal. It's like, I don't know if it's a coach putting his ego aside or it's, he's so, um, like he's Bradley. so obsessed with with trying to get the message through to this That's kid. That's what I was just going to say. They're in a position. They need to win games. This kid can score. You need another goal. Like, what are you doing right now? Yeah, so you just said for the message to get through, like maybe that's been a frustration for Lindy all season long because they do like to play a certain style of game. They like to take off, like take chances. Maybe he's sick of seeing these type of turnovers and he thinks that's that, that's what's leading to a lot of these losses. So maybe it was something that was said to him over and over in video sessions and meetings. So where it ended up building up and you said, well, he still threw him out there and he ended up scoring on the power play. So oftentimes when you're snapping around and working on the power play leading up to games, you don't want to just maybe take a guy out of that role to, no, no. A, and another guy in. So I, I, I get where you're coming from, but it, def, it definitely came off as very sensitive, and I th- feel like the pressure is mounting. And I've said it a few times leading up to the to this podcast where I felt that Andrew Brunette helped out a ton with that coaching staff and and had a good way of connecting with the younger players. He did so when he was in Florida. I thought he ca- kind of got a bit of the shaft in Florida, although genius hire with Paul Maurice, and that's turning out great. Now, Pasha is sitting to my left now. Are you coming to talk about whether you think Lindy Ruff should get fired That's or not. What I, I want are, to know your are you opinion coming, on Are you Lindy. coming to, to, to try to back up your horrible JT Miller? T- uh, tr- I'm not Island is one nothing. We're talking about the devil. We're talking about the devil? Nothing. Okay. I, I'm not one of those fans that's calling for Lindy's head. Okay. He's not a perfect coach, but his handling of Holtz is definitely something that I don't like. Yeah, it's he's got bizarre. It out, he's got it out for this guy. Holtz has as many five-on-five goals as Nylander, Dreisaitl, and Pedersen. He's got 11 five-on-five oh. goals. And this guy plays eight minutes a night, buried on the fourth wow. line. He came ready this to guy, play today. Oh, he's got, yeah. He's Holy got the, shit. Stat man. He's got, no, 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 no. he's got the best shot on the team. He's putting <laughs> the headphones on, ladies and gentlemen. He means business. Well, he's making good points. I didn't know about the five-on-five goal stat, but continually to play nine to ten minutes with offensive guys injured and you're an offensive young high pick, it is. Fan, that that drives fans insane because in their mind they're like we got a future 34 goal guy a 30 40 goal guy let us see him and a coach is I, just like no i don't know what's going i don't know if he rents lindy's wife or what <laughs> oh jeez. Still- <laughs> okay here we go rumor boys rumor boys He's got it out for hey, that's him my and, joke and like you said Whit, like the guy can score the devils need scoring and yeah, the way he's handled Holtz has been brutal. But I mean, I I still don't think Lindy should be fired. With the injuries they've had, the goaltending they've had, he needs Jack to come back. Give him a run with Dawes and Nett and the team healthy. If they're struggling still, it's another question. Quick reminder here. They're on the outside looking in. They they're, are. They're not in a playoff But spot. they have games in hand. I understand. What is your punishment again if they miss playoffs? I have to get your name tattooed on my ass. <laughs> I thought it was pierced like, eyebrow. Like, Again, that's if the they don't make time. it out of the I first I think Pasha time. wants my name. <laughs> so he's going to have a pierced eyebrow and a tattoo on his ass. If yeah, they don't, I think he wants that make- tattoo on his ass. Uh, here's the thing I'll say, right? Considering the Islanders and the Devils are in a pretty similar spot right now, Right? Would no, you say? Not at all. If, if no, say, no, no, no. This season. I'm not talking about future. Who, who would not I bet all. the house on? Oh How so? How so? 
the Islanders have been mostly healthy all year, and they suck. The Devils, once they get we healthy, just, we, are, just, we just talked about can. some of their They're both oh, fighting oh, for they, the playoffs. I know that, but the Islanders are where they are being mostly healthy. The Devils are where they are. Yeah, yeah but the they just got it, Patty Wah, buddy. No, no, no Pasha, you're year. such an absolute lunatic. They, <laughs> I don't care how they've gotten here. Okay. They're in a similar position Correct. in the NHL right now. Yeah. If you're talking if, purely points in the standings, yes. But okay, that's outlook, what I meant. Outlook moving forward. Think about what the Devils have on the way to help out. Islanders are the same fucking old slow roster. Okay. If I'm a top team and I get in, I'd rather play the fucking Devils than I'd sure. play the Islanders in the sure. first round. Sure. sure. Well, How'd that work so, out so for the Rangers goal, last year? Yeah. Hey, nope, nope. Last year was a different story with your team, and you know it. Uh, yeah, Every know. single aspect of the Devils this year, the vibe, the the it, well, although I guess they were they were chanting fire Lindy game one last year. <laughs> so it's just I guess time is a flat circle, but there is something weird and injuries, they're enormous. But you know what? A lot of haters of the Devils would say everyone deals with injuries. Bullshit. The whole name a team, does, name man. a team that's had more injuries than no, the Devils. No, no, I, I will say you guys have had the injury bug, but based on uh, your big stats guy, what would they have to finish the season at right now in New Jersey in order to probably clinch a playoff spot? I believe there's 76 points left on the table for them, and they probably have to get. 96 to total. 98 points total. They're at 49 right now. So Ooh. they did another 39 points out of 76, roughly. Yeah, I mean, they're too back at what a game in hand on Detroit they're, is playing right now. They're not yeah. like, yeah. yeah, the season isn't over by any means. It's just everything around that team. It's like a cursed season right it, now. It looks like a cursed season. Their goaltending has been a joke. Barbara Injuries Hoff. have been ridiculous. He's available. So what do you do about the goaltending? Yeah. And what do you do about, like, at some point, Vanacek, you're like, oh, I'm, this Vanacek guy. Is you think Marty comes Shoot back now moon. that Patty's back? Shoot him to the moon. Vanacek is <laughs> Shoot him to the moon. No, honestly, at this I'm, point, I'm Marty would be better than Vanacek. He's been so bad. Like, I gave him a lot of leash. She was breaking, bro records last year for win streaks and stuff but then collapsed in the playoffs this year he's been so bad i hope he never plays the devils again oh, and, and i've heard he's an amazing guy oh. whatever he sucks Shit i would love, to, love to see marty you're back in the him. net you're done, done with, with him. him okay all right yeah well I mean, brad's you, you done his job hughes is amazing just can't stay healthy i mean listen you put it this way Wendy for an 891 save percentage win i mean it's 30th in the league it's not him to blame but but this is what i think you can maybe blame lindy on 44 games, they've given up the first goal in 31 of them. That's almost 75% of the time you'll get them the first goal. That tells me a team that's not prepared. Walk the plank, to play Lindy. The time. Walk the plank. I agree already. That, that's a really weird stat, and that's inexcusable. They're always slow out of the gate. That's definitely a concern. But like you said, yeah, uh, this is a team missing well, five of their six D-men from last year. Okay, And, and if you're Fitzy, what are you going to do? Are you going to give Graves and Severson the contracts they got? Absolutely not. Like those are brutal deals long term. Yep. So, yep. so I agree so, with that. I agree so with that. So instead of them, you've got a 19 year old Simone Nemitz and a 20 year old Luke Hughes stepping in. So of course, short term, it's going to hurt them. But I'd rather the little short term growing. You pain said all this. You said all this that this year they'd take a little step back. Right. But it's all been magnified because they can't get saves. Right. Yeah. So everything just looks worse. And then you add Hamilton being hurt, Siegenthaler being hurt. Now that's what I've been talking about. The forwards. What I'm is Hamilton's? Surprised. Like when do he, they he, think he, he can be he, back? He pulled his pack, and sometimes Tor, Tori's pack or Tori's pack. Tori's yeah, pack. like is that pulled. like is that like if they make playoffs, he's back? Or? Yeah, it, it'll wow. be right around playoff time. Oof. So I think he's gonna uh, Fitz is gonna pull the old Kucherov LTIR, use that nine million to hopefully bring in you know Chris Tanev type. Bring in a goalie and and then you know bring Hamilton back. Early May is what they're saying for him. Last stat I'm gonna ask you about. Uh, Jack Hughes is well on pace to break over 100 points. You have this bet going with Witt. He has dealt with injury. At what point, right now, what does it sit, his point production pace? It's going to take a lot for it to happen this year. He's at 45 right now. Like He would have to come back and hit the ground running to hit it. I hope he does. It's not looking good for this year. Are you mad you didn't take the take the buyout? Absolutely not, because he's going <laughs> to smash it next year. Okay, we'll <laughs> see. I, I, you know what? This is like a win win for me in terms of losing money. That sucks, but I like the kid and I love his game. Yeah. So in the end, it is it is turned into an interesting bet. I'll say that, Pasha. One more thing before we let you go. Forty six games played, twenty one goals, forty two points, sixty forty two assists, sixty three points for J T. Miller. Like oh. it, like like it. As as good friends and like we spent some so much time together, like just say it, like you, you fucked up yeah. on this one, man. This guy is he's so haunting your dreams. Good. He's haunting I'm your dreams. He's playing shit. unbelievable. He's gonna be hockey. the boogeyman in your closet in Vancouver. Oh, he's setting condo. guys up. He's scoring big Watch goals. Like he is deep. just a all, gamer. All I'll say <laughs> is that I maintain what I said at the start of the year in the terms of everything I said was true for him the last few seasons. 
Yes, he's taken a step this year. He's producing a lot more. However, five on five, he's still not that great offensively and he is not good defensively. And he still has the worst body language in the league. So he is better than what I thought in body November. Language. He's having a hell of a year. You're like my wife. You're oh, like yeah. a stubborn oh, person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he's this the, guy. Yeah, he's the, the pregnant wife that finally gonna, admits. The, the Canucks are going to raise the cup and he's going to be having the cons by the posse bag. I don't know, man. His shoulders, were, sh his shoulders were shrugged in the celebration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Unreal. All right. Well, hey, buddy. Uh, thanks for coming on. Give thanks, us the Bosh, double. We love you. One, one, one guy that I really think could have turned your season around was Corey Perry, but the Edmonton Oilers, <laughs> the Whip Dog. <laughs> You have to be hopping back on this bandwagon. Okay. So should I just address everything right now? Oh, actually, when we're talking Oilers, I think I have my favorite Bob Stoffer text oh, of all time I can read. He's been humming. <laughs> just, just describing what has happened there. This guy's a legend. <laughs> so in terms of me and the Oilers, it's, it's, it's come to this. I'm going to be honest with everyone. I haven't missed a game, okay? Like, I'm looking at the camera. I have not not watched a game. Yes, they lost San Jose, and I made it a big deal out of I was off the bandwagon. I never stopped watching, okay? There is something. I don't know how to explain it. If I tweet about the Oilers, the 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 worst stuff imaginable happens. The other night, I well, I tweeted, we're going to wax the Leafs, and then I said, here we go, and sure as shit, they're losing. And I had to get off my phone, and they come back and win. So at this point, it's like everyone in Edmonton, no, I am a fan, and you can blame me and say that this, because I hopped off the social media bandwagon, this is why they're winning, which we also called what happened when I quit. We said they're going to go on a run like this. Everything that I've said has come true. Now, Unfortunately, I can't be a part of it. I'm like the kid on the outside who doesn't get picked for the kickball game. But I, I just, I want everyone to know I'm there. I just, I, whenever I talk about them, like bad stuff happens. So I just have to stay away and root for every, root for them to win every game. And just, I don't know, be on the sidelines. It blows because uh. imagine if I hadn't stopped. Imagine if I had a set of balls and I just stuck with them. Like imagine my, I could be ripping up Twitter on a rampage oh right God. now, but I can't say a word because ever since I went silent the team's unbelievable but i called this and i wrote a tweet the morning of the first game of the nhl season explaining how excited i was that nhl is back and i said and the edmonton Oilers is going to win the stanley cup and nobody saw that start nobody but right now this is a team oh yeah who is firing on all cylinders and they people, people like pasha and people out there who say they're just uh, a mcdavid and leon no, team no i don't think so no, anymore no, no, buddy no, 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 no. have you seen ryan mcleod oh, last yeah. 12 games 12.7 goals he's just one of the fastest skaters in the league i i think this team right now is on the perfect projection and yes i guess if the beginning of the season hadn't happened they'd be even better off but you know what they dealt with that. They they had to figure themselves out. They got a new coach, and now this team is unstoppable. They're unstoppable. Every single area that we are criticizing, they've improved. They've improved. Goaltending has been tremendous. What Paul Coffey has done with the back end, Evan Bouchard is fucking, he might end up top three for the fucking Norris, the way that he's humming offensively. And also, it ain't just that, too. He looks way better defensively. Darnell Nurse looks like a whole different fucking player. Uh you you talked about them leaning on the big boys. It ain't really like that anymore right now. E e even throughout this run, this 13 game run, I think there's 10 games in which McDavid only has one point. Where, but also if you watch him, his game looks different too. And I'm not McDavid is still doing McDavid stuff, but the efforts he's putting forth on in every area of the ice where it just ain't him fucking dancing guys and going backhand cheddar off these crazy rushes. Like if like let's go back to that Toronto game. When they ended up getting that game winner, who was the guy in the corner who fought? Well, I think he ended up winning the face off. Then he's in the fucking corner on the four check, disrupting Riley, ends up winning that puck battle. The play continues. It goes to the point, shot to the net. He gets a stick on it. And who was there battling Austin Matthews in front of the net? Where was it Fogel who ended up popping out? It was McLeod. It was McLeod. So, and, and Austin enough, didn't look great on that one. Hey, oh, yeah. what a, hey well, okay, okay. So, but he ended up going into Calgary the next game and no, literally put the team oh, on his back. He's the least of the worries yeah, for the yeah, Mavis. Yeah. So I'm just saying, <laughs> to get out of the way yeah, of a shot, it was a little, it was a little I'll, olay -ish. I'll be honest, if I was on pace for 70 i wouldn't block <laughs> one single fucking shot let's just make that clear i didn't block one and i was never on pace for anything <laughs> but um the the, the fogel and mcleod brazing their game and the fact that they're also getting this done where 
I feel like Evander Kane can reach another level. Oh, and yeah. if he goes back to even 75% of what he was when they made their run to the Western Conference Finals, what, I think he still ended up leading the league in, in, or in playoff goals that year. Yeah, he had a ton. He had like 12 or 14 goals. And then now you add Perry to the mix. And who's the other kid? Is it Holloway? Yeah, he's coming out. Yeah, he's and got he, a lot of speed. Dude. A lot of speed, and he di- he's a disruptor. So all of a sudden, you got the first two lines absolutely humming right now, playing unreal 200-foot games. They're not having to fucking drop the ace of spades every game where fucking uh, Dreisaitl and McDavid are playing 24, 25 minutes. That was a major issue that anybody with half a brain had where it couldn't be sustainable in playoffs. They're not having to do that. They're winning games 3-2 mentality and locking things down. Once Evander Kane's line gets going and he starts fucking humming, and if they can fucking get Corey Perry being the worm and a disruptor, just like that Holloway on the fourth line, look out, Wit. I agree with you. That could be the team that comes out of the West. So um, I'll read you Stoff's text. Oh, man, I can't wait for this. Let me put my hand on my pants. One so time. it's just, I, and just like knowing Stoff and how he talks and seeing him type that sweating out, it just makes off. it even he was better. sweating his balls off reading this. Says Ryan. <laughs> Jay Woodcroft played a hybrid defensive zone system. We went over this back in the struggles. The wingers up high on the D and then basically a low three, three on three man on man for the centers in the D defensively. Vegas destroyed Edmonton five on five as the series went on last year. They got Edmonton running around. They were creating a lot of grade A scoring chances off of long cycles. Also true. Cassidy coaches a zone. Montgomery kept Cassidy's zone when he took over the Bruins. Look what they've done. So Woodcroft had done a deep dive in the summer on the zone. Tried to implement it through training camp in the start of the season, but he had not coached it before. He pivoted back to his hybrid for the Heritage Classic. Well, Chris Knobloch came from Rob Dom's Alberta Golden Bears program, which has been playing a zone forever! Exclamation point. The, the Alber- Alberta Golden Bears are a program and a half. Chris coaches zone. He knows <laughs> zone. This is what I love. This is my favorite zone. D started in sport in the NFL in the 1960s because <laughs> cornerbacks couldn't cover Bob Hayes from the Cowboys. He won the 1964. <laughs> 100, he won the 1964 hundred meter at the Olympics. So teams dropped a safety back. The NBA had to outlaw zone defense because it worked. Games were too lower scoring in hockey. Zone allows you to have a have at least one D always in front of the net. The center becomes more important to low support coverage. Oh, yeah. But when you get the puck, it allows for a quick transition, often up the middle of the ice, where the Oilers have strength. But Oilers D coach Dave Manson, he didn't want the Oilers D making mistakes coming up the middle of the ice. Understandably, yeah. you know, a lot of defensive coaches keep it out of the middle. <clears throat> so Edmonton went up the wall a ton under Woodcroft and Manson, and teams were sealing the wall on them. But Knobloch and Coffee have empowered the D to make plays. They are playing zone. The Oilers are much better at being on the right side of the puck five on five. They limit the chances again off against off the rush. The goalies, mostly Skinner, simply aren't seeing the same amount of A-grade opportunities five on five as they did under Woodcroft. Knobloch changed the PK too. <laughs> Woodcroft used 23 sets for forwards in his 13 games. Knobloch and Mark Stewart, who took over the PK from Manson, primarily used Three sets of forwards. Nugent Hopkins, Derek Ryan, Jan Mark, Connor Brown, McLeod, and Fogel. Dreitzeitel comes on to take the D zone draws for Jan Mark. Then he goes off. Those three forwards pairings have been given ownership and role clarity. The Edmonton Oilers are for real. <laughs> Oh, I hope he was just talking. Hey, hey, round shit. of applause for Bob fucking <laughs> Stoffer. Holy shit. You don't Holy think that stop. guy's dialed in. You don't think Bob Stoffer knows oh hockey. My and then his last little note was the PK was in 30th, 70% when Jay Woodcroft was fired. Under Knobloch in 29 games played, the PK is second at 88.5%. And as a result, has moved up to ninth overall in the league. So everyone who hates the Oilers and says it's all McDavid, it's all Leon, you have no clue what you're talking no about. Clue. This is a complete team in terms of the future fans hate Cody CC he's playing with nurse on the top pair I feel bad being the defense he's gonna be the Jack there. he's gonna be the Jack Johnson just like just Hopefully, like they need, but they, but they need they need they need a defenseman they need to grab a defenseman just something just something I don't know I think you roll the dice with Cody CC no I'm not saying it's to like not have him play it's oh, okay another guy on the back end and maybe a little goaltending help I'm not exactly sure but Farlamov it's incredible to see what the Oilers have Larry? done I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think there's a team in the league right now if they're playing that 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 could even sniff them. Bring on anyone right now. Watch them lose ten in a row.
And, uh, and of course they added Corey Perry, which I, you know, we were cool. taught, we talked, was it last podcast about this? Yeah. And we were going rumor boys. Rumor on boys I, I thought that there was no possible way he ended up in Canada with the media circus and obviously the, everything that's gone on. But once you did say from your, your trusted insider G that that was a potential landing spot, Edmonton makes the most sense. It's they the, don't give a fuck. It's the Edmonton. one place in Canada they're like, I don't give a fuck about the SJ Dubs yeah. online. Yeah. I just want to win but fucking hockey fuck games. You know, what, what, what any city, what do you, you don't even know what happened. So what the exactly. fuck does yeah. anyone care? What are you gonna Nobody give a fuck knows about, the story. You know? I understand, but you know how the media works in Canada. It's the whole reason why they're saying that Elias Peterson doesn't want to sign there. That's Merle. That's, that's, that's the Merle. Oh, okay. No, but I think Perry, and I said this to RA or, or you, Biz, like, yeah, the first the first press conference, like they'll be he'll they'll be asking him all these questions, which he'll say what'd you, what'd you do? Which, which he'll say no comment to. And then what are they gonna do? They're, they're not gonna keep talking about it. It'll be over. So no matter the market, the beginning will be a little weird, and then he'll play, and you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna be a rat and he's gonna play up and down oh, the lineup yeah. and he's gonna get spot on the second power play. And imagine if Connor Brown starts scoring. He missed a wide open net in Calgary on Saturday night. He still doesn't have a goal this year. What a loser. So, that was unreal that game. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I didn't score many either. Uh, do you hear they're they're changing their uh, their third jersey to orange jump shoots? Oh, for who? <laughs> Trying to say Perry did a crime? No. no I'm, I'm just saying they submitted. I, I, it was a request. I didn't say they get it granted yet. I think that the Oilers are so fun to watch, oh too. Now, I'm not biased, but I'm just saying. Bravo's doing a behind-the-scenes doc on them the rest of the season. <laughs> did you hear that, Ari? <laughs> they're throwing uh, in some real yeah. housewives? Yeah. Yeah, Carson Cressley. No, a couple of numbers on Knobloch, though. Uh, 23 and 6 since taking over. Uh, the fifth coach in NHL history to record a win streak of uh, 12 plus games in his first season with the franchise. How about these numbers, Wit? 12 and 0 versus the West, 8 and 0 versus the Pacific. Uh, he's also done something no other coach has ever done. Uh, the first head coach to have two separate seven game winning streaks, at least seven game winning streaks, in their first 25 games. So, this guy found the magic button for the squad. They're getting it done. So if they go to on to get home ice in the first round, he's he's finalist for Jack Adams, correct? Uh, I was was Barube f finalist when they had that turnaround. Did he win know. it that year? I don't know. Can we get a Google search here, but I would agree with. I mean, you're, if going on your win percentage, she'll probably be at the top if that's the case. It's gonna. If Vancouver's it, just so good because of JT Miller, they can't catch him. Yeah, and the full body of work, and then also not having. Um, McDavid and Dreisaitl, but very impressive what they've done. Now they add Corey Perry. So I think that we can all agree they're at least going to the Stanley Cup Finals. Yes, That's yes, kind of yes, what yes, Corey yes, Perry yes. does. Whether they're going to win it or not, I don't know. Barry, uh, Barry Trotz won it that year. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, we, uh, we do got to give a quick stroke to the Edmonton, too. I mean, 13 straight wins. That's the most the Canadian team has ever had. They passed the 67-68 Canadians, a pretty damn good team in their own right. Uh, the record is the 92-93 Penguins. They won 17 straight. Uh, Edmonton team record ninth straight road win. Uh, they did it win the potato sacks the other night. Those are fucking ugly unis, man. I know it's the heritage shit, but those are horrible. Uh, Oilers, they also set a franchise record with 11 consecutive games, allowing two or fewer goals. Stuart Skinner, man, we got to tip the cap to him. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be shopping for goalie now, Biz, with the, what he's been doing lately. Uh, tenth straight start, tied Grand Fuel for the franchise record with uh, two or fewer goals in his last nine starts. Guy's been getting it done. Eight of the 13 wins, they've come from behind. I don't know, man. This team has been unbelievable since the fucking goal, uh, coaching change. But and they have Columbus and Chicago. Yeah, they got a couple games. couple layups. They're going to get the fifteen for sure. Now, oh, are, are are they are they the bad boys of the league right now? Are they the bad boys? No. Who are the bad boys? The Florida Panthers. Yeah, still, that's true. That's true. They're they're just scum. Oh, but but scum in a good way. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah. You know you know who needs some scum. The Toronto Maple Leafs oh. need some scum. I think that somebody said Brad Tree Living calls it snot. We need some snot. We need some. We need some absolute horses in there to piss some people off. Just nothing from that team. But we talk about Toronto, so I'm yeah. sorry. I digress. Yeah, no, it's alright. Yeah, tuned up. I mean, Vancouver basically. I thought because they. Sh it kind of showed Toronto what they're missing, like depth scoring. Exactly, R.A. Right. You know, first like, hey, period, we, Hoglanders winning battles. Garland's in front. They they uh, they were playing like it was literally. If you're a Maple Leafs fan, you're watching the game. Like we don't have any of this. We don't have third and fourth line scoring and getting inside guys and playing in the crease. It was the and now they came back to make it three three. But that first period was eye opening. I was watching it and I was I was like, this is this is embarrassing. They're getting run out of the building. They didn't. They they had no reason not to be ready to play that game so so my feeling on toronto at this point is i'm, I'm no longer going to be delusional i um, wow 
I think there's probably a 10% chance they miss playoffs, which would be catastrophic and there'd be a lot of noise. And uh, I probably wouldn't be shocked if they moved on from Keith, if that was the case. I don't think he should be fired mid-season. I, I, I think they should let him ride out the rest of the year because there are a lot of flaws in the lineup, as you just mentioned. Right now, they need to get some goaltenders healthy and also get some saves. Uh, they need the defensive zone to be a lot better, but it seems like the comments from inside the organization, the tone has changed a little bit to kind of realizing like this team is not built to win now and we're looking at the future. That's there's been a couple comments that have came I saw up. Elliot say something about that too. Uh, like they Elliot, might know brutal. this isn't it this year. And and I think that for the first time in the contract, the, the Tavares one is is just really, really hurting him. Isn't for, it weird how it it now not, this is crazy. It's not he could light it up in the next 10 games, but right. sometimes it goes so quick. And he when was that what is he how many goals is so so I think that uh in the last 29 games he has one five on five goal and that is just i mean where i like to 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 judge guys is what they're doing five on five right because like i mean there's a lot of power plays now a lot of guys are, are cookie monsters when it comes to the pp that's why when i was backing up saying mckinnon's in my opinion the best player going right now in the mvp is leading the league in five on five points he's going against the best players every night and then ending up on the right side of the puck and with jt as far as like just watching him he's obviously ha has slowly lost the speed so the boots aren't there i think if you look at his numbers right now he's got 40 points maybe a little bit over 40 points but that's just aside from that it's not as dominant as it was and when you're talking about 11.5 million dollars you need a guy driving a line night in and night out and that's just not happening so he's got 34 points 34 man. i thought he was at, the, at and, 40 and, so. and then like but you know what you don't want to just dog this legend of the game no, but yeah. like they signed Bertuzzi and they signed Domi. I think have nine goals between them. It's I mean, like, Domi's well, making less than what Bertuzzi is, and I actually find like some games. Like there was a few games ago uh, where where Domi's line they like took over, like they put him in a position to win. So as far as what you're paying Domi and what the production is, yeah, maybe it's not. Maybe you're a little off, but to me, Bertuzzi is the guy who stood out the most as far as just being way let down on the type of player, the aggression, uh, the net front pest, the the winning the wall battles, the winning really any battles. He just, just doesn't look comfortable in Toronto. And maybe yeah. this is the type of guy where he comes alive after the All-Star break. Like some of these guys, like especially with the how, how many seasons they've played, they look at this as the doldrums of the year where they're like, hey, I'm going to turn it up when the money matters. And right now I haven't seen enough out of him. So. All right. Um, yeah. Who came out with the report about the trade that Dubas had turned down for flurry? Oh yeah. I get that down the Mark Andre section. That was, that was confirmed. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, that was definitely from a, a reputable source. Because the way people happen. made it sound was like, how do you not do that? Once you read it off, like, I don't think I would have done it. It was nyes and first rounders. No. It's like, I don't like, no, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, this, people uh, made it, people made it sound like they turned down a deal to get McDavid or something. Darren Dreger had that. Yeah. This was uh, per, yeah, per John Shannon. He was on a podcast the other day. The Leafs and Kyle Dubas had a deal in place to acquire Mark Andre Floyd from Chicago back in 2022. Uh, but Brendan Shanahan vetoed it. Uh, Darren Dreger reported the deal was uh, Brandon Hagel and Flurry to the Maple Leafs for Peter Mrazek, Matthew Nyes, and a first round picks. So Hagel's uh, nice. Oh, Hagel's oh, nice. Oh, oh, oh. Hagel's nice. That changed things up. Dice. Hagel's so, nice. You know, I mean, it's, it's not as simple as it sounds, you know, when you throw all the other shit in there. I mean, Nyes, a huge prospect, a first round pick. I mean, you can kind of see why Shani might have vetoed that, right? Now, so there was also another rumor. Don't know if this is true, but of course, we're the rumor boys, so we're going to believe it. But there was a uh, before Marner's no move clause kicked in that Dubas was trying to move on from him. That was the guy he was considering parting ways with. Now, Shani also vetoed that. That's the rumor I'm hearing. So there was a lot of moves in which it seems like Shani was trying to say, nah, 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 let's maybe look towards the future where considering they didn't end up moving on from Marner, I like the idea of not only keeping him, Nylander, and Matthews, but Nyes is really your only hope, especially once JT comes off the books. Like This is a guy where when you see Nyes show up for a night, he'll have one and two and he'll be dominant. We always talk about the consistency of these young guys. That's what he hasn't been able to find yet. So I would not have moved on from Nyes, especially at the fact that you have him restricted coming up and then look what you ended up having to pay Hegel where 
the the time just wouldn't have aligned. Yeah, that's Tampa true. was more in win now mode, and that made more sense. So I'm actually happy that he nixed that. Sometimes the best it, ones are rare, the ones you don't make. Fuck it, yeah, absolutely. This is an interesting stat. I know Steve Dangle on his show the other day. He said that Toronto had never won a three playoff series in the year, but they actually did back in 1932. The first, last, and only time the Toronto Maple Leafs won three playoff rounds in a season was 1932. Uh, they played the Blackhawks in the first round. They actually tied 1-1. It was a two-game series. It was a total goals thing. Uh, they played the Montreal Maroons. They went 1-0-1, another total goal thing. And the New York Rangers, they won 3 not in the Stanley Cup. Yeah, that's so a that, legit that, three rounds right there. That's that's that's. Well, well, <laughs> they have I, not I won well, three rounds. Well, exactly. Well, the, the legit stat is they haven't, but, but you know, I'm, you know, me, I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking stat nerd. I got to keep it. Specific. Yeah. You just want to take one more uh, dump on my chest about my Leafs. Well, guys, like I said, I'm no. not being delusional anymore. I'm starting to see a little you bit more clearly. Whack, I and I appreciate you guys bringing me back down to earth. We can yeah, move can. on from the Leafs. We try. We try. Well, I mean, it kind of kicks off with this whole hockey day in Canada theme talking about all these Canadian squads. Uh, yeah, one actually, one last quick note. One guy who is not going anywhere, Rob Blake, said that uh, Todd McClellan will be his coach for the rest of the year. Uh, the Kings been scuffling a bit lately, only two regulation ones in the last 12 games. But he said uh, the answer is going to come from within. Our philosophy here for the past three, four years is on the structure, the system, the design, the buying of the players. So nobody's going anywhere, at least as far as coaching. I know Talbot's been struggling lately. So one coach not going anywhere. Todd McClellan, write that down. And yeah, Hockey Night in Canada. I'm sorry, Hockey Day in Canada, Biz. I love it, man. They had six teams pair off. Of course, the Canadians were down here in Boston. But the big game, the Battle of Alberta, we already mentioned Edmonton. What game did you hone in on most that night? Well, I, I to, to, in- to me, it was obviously Vancouver uh, and the Leafs. And probably the biggest takeaway was Bieksa, right? He's from Van- play, played in Vancouver, beloved there. And when he was in Victoria, everybody's coming up to him being like, oh, you know, is Vancouver going to win the cup? Vancouver going to win the cup? And it's like, buddy, if I said to you before the season, should we just roll what he said? Well, I've been in the province for 11 days now and between Vancouver, Victoria and Whistler. And I've had this question asked for me hundreds of times already. And will the Canucks win the cup this year? Now, listen, this is what I say. At the start of the season, if I told you the Canucks were going to get the second wild card, take it or leave it. Fans, fans would probably have taken it, right? Now, they've overexceeded expectations or at the top of the NHL, regardless of the day. And what I like to say is just pump the brakes. Pump the brakes, ride the wave. A lot of good things going on. Hockey is exciting. It's successful again in Vancouver. The team's obviously going to make the playoffs, so maybe concentrate on getting out of that first round, but it is not Stanley Cup or bust in Vancouver this year. It is a great year. It's a fun year, and it's fun to be in Vancouver again. And there you have it. I mean, that's that, That's pretty much should go out to anybody in today's world is try to live in the moment, enjoy what's going on now because they're playing with the house's money. This is a team that's 100% going to make playoffs. They might end up winning the fucking Pacific, but but then again, you might be lined up against the Edmonton Oilers. You, you just don't know. It's anyone's game in the West. As long as you got a chip in a chair as a Vancouver Canucks fan, enjoy this awesome ride during the regular season and buckle up because it's going to be a very, very interesting playoff. And I think that with how quick things can turn around and just trying to strike in your moment. I mean, look at the year where St. Louis, we just talked about it. They were completely out of it and they go on to win the cup. Apparently, they're kicking tires on Jake Gensel. Okay, this Gensel thing is wild. It's wild. Me. It's wild. And and I really do see both sides of it. I'll give you my opinion at the end. But to kind of go through what's going on is Gensel's a UFA. Gensel is a legitimate point-per-game player. He's been a two-time 40-goal scorer. He is absolutely a high-end level and offensive clutch, player. And clutch, clutch in playoffs. Not, yeah, I say two-time 40-goal scorer. How about two-time cup winner and a guy who you just know what you're going to get? When coaches look at the roster, they want to know what they're going to get, and the guys that they love are the guys that they never question. I'm going to get this night in and night out. That's Gensel. So all these Pittsburgh fans might be wondering, well, why would you trade this guy? Like, what is going on? You bring over Eric Carlson. You sign Graves. You're making all these moves to try to go on one more run. Who knows? Maybe three years of Crosby left. Although the way Crosby's playing, like he's having one of the best seasons a mid-30s players ever had in the NHL. So I think fans are like, wait a minute. No, like sign him. We need to still go on this run. Now, the other side of it is, okay, 
His career numbers are very similar to William Nylander. William Nylander just got 11 and a half. He took a deal. This is Gensel. He took a team-friendly deal five years ago, and he's made a very, very legit salary for what he produces. This is his time to crush it and break the bank. Now, in the end, he could take another team-friendly deal, but I think he's probably looking at it like, I've won, I, at least this is me, I've won two cups. I keep producing. I deserve, like, yeah. he, he's probably going to get 10 million bucks a year on the open market. I don't even know if he's necessarily necessarily worth that, but that's how the numbers work. That's the numbers game. You go to comparables. So as a Penguins fan or, or, or a Kyle Dubas, it's like, well, we can trade this guy. We can get some legit assets and we can realize that we can't give him this huge deal because what's going to happen in three years from now? You know what I'm saying? Like we, we really need to think of the future. You're going to be having to hit the cap yeah. floor in three years when those that's, guys are done. But, but the thing, the window's going to close too. The window's going to close, but that that's the argument of like, that's why my thing is you should sign him because what what, what are you saying to Sidney Crosby? This is his winger. This these guys are they're two peas in a pod. They read each other everywhere. And Sid's got this little little window left to try to win another one, which seems very unlikely, but you never know. And all of a sudden you're gonna deal his guy at the deadline. I don't know. I'm just like, if you hadn't gone all in and got Carlson and signed Malkin and Latang and done what they did, okay, yeah, you're moving on. But they didn't do that. So why can you go against what your theory was a couple months ago and change completely and get rid of your one of your top scorers? I I, I don't agree with it. And, and, and although Crosby's butt chugging from the fountain of youth this year, like let's say Max, <laughs> let's say Max, he can do what he's doing this year for two more years. At a certain point, guys there is going to be regression. So you have to look at it like these next two years are my years to strike. And why would you move on from, if you move on from Gensel, you're you giving can, in you, 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 it me, you ain't, you ain't doing shit. Yeah. I, there's, I, I think there's not a chicken dicks chance that they might not even make playoffs moving forward. If that's the case, like this, this is why this year so far, and we talk to army about it all the time. This has been a very disappointing season in a Jekyll and Hyde show for that team. What a wasted effort from Crosby. All if day. they don't end up sneaking in a playoff, exactly. because right now it seems like they're probably going to look at a wild card. But man, now you got all these other teams who are outside looking in who like, I mean, fucking Islanders are going to make a run. You know that, you know that the devils are going to improve. I think there's a high probability this Pittsburgh team ends up missing playoffs. Right now, they're, they're, this is stats. It's 75% chance to make the playoffs. Like they should. But if you trade Gensel, who knows, he's right? Got a, he's got a no move clause too. Gensel? Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, like he, if they're not going to sign him, why like, why would he not agree to go somewhere for a run and try to light up the playoffs and get a bigger deal? Yeah, then he would get to decide where he goes. You do a sign and trade in, in uh, Sayonara. And he's only made 30 million, though, Wit. Like you said, like he didn't sign a big deal before. It was a thir uh, five year, uh, $30 million deal, six AAV. What were his point totals in the year they, they both won the cup? I, I think he had 30 points in one of so them. So in 2016, 2017, in the playoffs, he had 21 points in 25 games. Um, in. He wasn't on the team for the for the first one. Oh, I thought he was Just there for the back to back. He was only there for the second one of the back to back. Really? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Oh, fuck. I thought he was there for so sure. So I take back. He's a two time cup winner. He oh, should yeah. get four million a year. Gee, not, <laughs> not so well. Not so well. Actually, gee, he actually it's a modified no trade clause, not a no move clause. Okay. So he could get traded, but he submits a twelve team uh list. How many goals did he have those. during that one? He must have had twelve goals during that cup run, though. He was he, he did 13 goals. 13 goals. Yeah, 13 yeah, he goals, was eight assists. Humming. Yeah, he was incredible. He was humming. You know, uh, yeah, but, but the Penguins, the 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 Saturday night in Vegas was so typical of this yeah. season. They play this awesome game. They're up two nothing, and in like five minutes in the third period, they give up three goals. They don't even get a point. Lose three two. Shout out to Brendan Basson who got his first NHL goal, which was the game winner. Real nice shot for Vegas. That was a cool story. To, it's probably kind of crazy to see a super agent in the game, son, not only make the NHL, yeah. but be a first round Dude, pick. Right. So Pat Brisson uh, is, is uh, one of the biggest super agents in hockey. He, he had a kid. His kid was drafted by the Golden Knights, played in his first NHL game, got the winner in it. And it just so it, happens that uh, Sidney Crosby was his babysitter as they were growing up. Dude. Hilarious, dude. His babysitter, dude. He he beat him on the play. Sid fucking broke his stick afterwards. That was the funniest, funniest part of the whole fucking thing, man. He beat his. Do you whole think Patty t tags Sid in the post <laughs> of the goal? <laughs> it, 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 you know what? I mean, we've said it for years on the show. When he's had a you know a ton of wingers, they they've done good because you know they're playing across you, but 
Gensel was never that. I mean, obviously, he's better with Crosby, but he's a dynamic fucking winger no matter who he's playing with. What, what Pascal Dupuis and Kunitz provided were guys who could get on the four check and then get him the puck back. Whereas I feel like Gensel can do that, but he's all, also has a little bit more touch around the net and he's more highly skilled. So to get it, it's hard finding the right pieces to play with Crosby. And that's why I think it's lunacy that they would consider consider trying to maybe move on from that, where maybe if he doesn't want to take a team friendly deal, it costs you an extra million, million and a half bucks. I agree with you. Yeah. I think an eight times 10 would be a perfect number and something that he would probably end up taking because you get that extra year, but God damn it. Here we are. Yeah, but if they're out of it, man, you you could get something for him. Then he could just fucking re up in the in the summertime. You know, yeah. Like UFA. So I, is that even back, allowed you know? anymore? No, it's, it's it's not already. I think if they outlawed that. You, uh, Wait, I I no, no, no I think sure. if he becomes a free agent, you're you can't yeah, trade it, a guy back within a year's time, like a year and a day. No. but you can re-sign. Yeah, yeah, they could they could trade him wherever if, if if he wins a cup, doesn't win a cup, whatever. He could just fucking right. sign a new deal with Pittsburgh right. next year. Yeah. Oh, what but all this, we got to talk You're, about Jim Rutherford. He got extended by Vancouver. I mean, this guy's 74 years old. Last year, Vancouver was, was a laughing stock. Uh, the bottom of the, the fucking stand, and his front office is kind of a joke. All of a sudden, they bring in Tockett. They've made the move for Ronick. This team is at a complete 180. They're basically the, maybe the favorite in the West right now. How good of a turnaround has it been for Rutherford? They got a, a three year extension. I guess they're gonna uh, extend Alvin too, but are they the favorite in the West? Is right? Would you say right now? Well, it goes yeah, back Cuba. goes back to the Lou conversation where where Rutherford he likes to powwow it. Like those coaches have a lot of say in what personnel they need in there, and I think that Talk was a big advocate for getting a good right handed shot in there. And I I view this Ronick deal as a, a Dev Devon Taves two point oh. To go oh, huge, to huge find a guy that can can squeeze in there and all of a sudden, like even he can provide offense. Like I don't remember Ronick's game being that good. Obviously, when you're on the ice with Quinn Hughes, like you're gonna be playing with a puck a lot more than you than you aren't, and you're gonna not gonna be getting grenades and in, in D to D passes, and everything's gonna be flattened on your tape, and you're gonna be getting, you know, second assist till you're blue in the face. But that it was a major component, uh, completely reframed the structure of the whole team and yeah, it's it's been the probably the the second best story in the NHL as opposed to the Winnipeg Jets from a surprise perspective, because I think everybody believed in what Vancouver's top end talent was. It was how to get that second layer to buy in, and we touched on it earlier. Also, um, Hoglander double digits and goals, Mikheyev double digits and goals, Dakota Joshua double digits and goals, uh, Lafferty double digits and goals. Garland's got I think eight or nine. Yeah. Like like, <laughs> buddy, I'm telling you, I think that the Vancouver Canucks, and I said it after the Zadorov trade, which I'm fucking wishing that Toronto would have picked that guy up. Just like, I, I, who, who was it the other game? Somebody tried to fuck around with one of his teammates and he ended up ragdolling him. Like, that's what every team needs is a fifth defenseman being that guy on a team. And they got a few of them. I think they got Ian Cole as well, right? So they got a bunch of mutants back there, Tyler Myers. So from top to bottom, man, I think that they're one piece away. If they end up getting Gensel and they maybe get rid of Kuzmenkov, Kuzmenkov. Is it Kuzmenko? I think it's Kuzmenko. I don't know, but that's another – that that. If you told me that the, uh, the Canucks were going to be this good after seeing Kuzmenko light it up last year and that he'd be like healthy scratch doing nothing, I'd say you're crazy. So somehow talk has figured out a way to not only kind of show this guy that like I don't love the way you play, but get the team to play this well with him doing nothing. Like I thought if they were going to bounce back, I'm like, oh, he might he might pop off for 45 goals, this guy. And, and there's just a disconnect there. That happens a lot. New coach comes in, guy has a lot of success, and maybe he doesn't love how you play, and, and things change quick. So kind of feel bad for the kid in a sense, but I think you're going to see him moved. Uh, all right, boys. Uh, another guy we got to talk about, uh, Jacob Chikrin. Looks like he's already sensed out uh, from our internet buddy, Lalim's Martian. Uh, he said, per the streets, it, it seems the hometown novelty has mostly worn off of Jacob Chikrin in his camp in Ottawa, hearing his interest in being a sin long term has diminished greatly. Uh, very unlikely that he extends, far more likely that he's dealt before coming UFA. Uh, the shine came off quickly. Apparently, he's got 26 points in 41 games this year. Still got one more year, one more year left on this deal at 4.6 mil. Pretty good price. He's got a modified no trade clause, so he can 10 teams he does not want to go to. Uh, what do you see him get dealt before this deadline? Uh, I mean, Ottawa obviously no hurry to get rid of him. Are we uh, looking at a potential uh, side and trade? What do you think is going to happen? I, I, I'm, I'm going to hop play. in here. I, okay. I just, Sorry. I mean, obviously Shabbat and Sanderson are their one and two, and I don't think they're going to move on from those guys. So sometimes 
you know, if, if Chikrin believes that he should get that first pairing type minutes, he not only wants them, but if he, if he gets them, then you can sign that bigger term deal where if you're going to get stuck in that three role and maybe he's not happy I, and this is all like, and they're both lefties and they're, too. yeah, I, I, I'm just like speculating here at this point. I haven't talked to him, but you know, and, and maybe things haven't necessarily worked out the best for him, maybe from a play perspective. I know the other night he got walked. I think it was on the game winner too in overtime, but it's like the Bo Byram thing. Like, I think he wants to be a top pairing defenseman. Like, maybe it's time to go somewhere else, get that type of ice time in the last year of your, of your deal, and and then you get your payday and you're a lot happier in your situation. But as you know, the grass isn't always greener. You got fucking the Coyotes playing as good as they've been playing, and Ottawa's a fucking dumpster fire. <laughs> I, I mean, this is probably the most disappointing team this season based on expectations. So I don't know how it's working out there and, and if he's just not happy, but I think from looking at who's ahead of him on the depth chart and who ain't going anywhere, that's probably be why it makes sense as to why he doesn't see a future there long term you can't i don't think you're paying a, a third defenseman six six and a half million dollars a year right the, the reason that i think he will get traded is because with him having another year it's two playoff runs right so you're dealing for him in ottawa like why wouldn't they if they know they're not going to resign him even though maybe they'd want to but say he's already kind of made it clear i'm not going to resign he'd be able to resign this summer you as a team going to get him, it's not just this year. You got him for next year. That makes a huge difference in terms of the assets that you're coming, that you're getting back. Like a haggle situation. Exactly. So like you're getting Chikrin for two year, two playoff runs. And so you'd give up a little bit more than Ottawa looks at it like, all right, well, we could grab a little bit more in return, maybe a little better prospect or a higher pick. So it makes sense to me that they would move on from him. And, and I guess with 10 teams, he won't go to. I, I don't know the teams, but you still can work with somebody because somebody who could add, who wants a defenseman and could add him, they'd be willing to pay this, this spring. I think rumor boys is uh, LA's kicking tires on them. And they okay. are a team that could definitely use a defenseman, low cap hit. Don't know what they have to move on from, but they have so many young guys up front and they got a deep prospect pool. So I'm sure there's something there that Ottawa would like to get their hands on. Yeah, the Seds also welcome back uh, Shane Pinto after that fucking ridiculous 41-game suspension that he got. Uh, he signed a one-year deal for the league minimum. Uh, Elliot Friedman said he's going to have a, a longer-term deal in place soon. Obviously, the, the way things played out this year was just easier to give him this deal right now. Well, but, and uh, you don't get ching-ching very much, too, because he's going to have to pay that 41-game fine. That's a that's a kick in the dick. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, because you got what? suspended for half the season, so you have to forfeit that salary. So if he would have ended up signing, like let's say a three year bridge at three million a year, you're well, getting dinged a million and a half as opposed to just getting. Oh yeah, if he'd signed that before, that yeah. So that helped. I'm sorry, Biz. I mean that. So that this helped them immensely, though, having a, a league minute though, right? Uh, yeah, I mean it, it helped them, but keep in mind he missed the half a season, and I don't know much how much leverage now he has on that. Con like in the summertime yeah. when you're negotiating after the season you had last year, you feel like your leverage is there, but knowing he's going to miss the half a season, you, you, now you're kind of like, hey, buddy, here's a here's a two year bridge deal at two million. Take it or leave it, or or, or kick rocks. Yeah, but yeah, I think uh, I know what you're saying, all right? Say this summer, he signed a four-year deal for three and a half a year. It's like that co that would have costed him way more. So exactly, I, I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah, he's only getting fined right. on, on that contract. And, you know, I mean, I, like I said before, we defended the guy. We don't know exactly what happened, but I, uh, we the don't Pinto think Parlay. Pinto, Pinto parlays, baby. Pinto parlay. I think we were saying the same thing, Rear. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. What else to do, Biz? All right, uh, a couple more notes here before we bring it over to our interview. By the way, guys, we haven't even mentioned it yet. Uh, you guys talked to the bus with the boys down in Florida. Uh, let the uh, audience know who, who the bus with the boys are for those who aren't familiar. Uh, two absolute beasts. It's Will Compton and Taylor Luan. Um, both played in the NFL for a long time. Taylor was a really high pick and I think an all pro, if not one of the top offensive linemen in the league. Will was just one of those muck and grind locker room guys who played for a long time. We talked about him last week, but they're lucky enough or we're lucky enough that they came to Orla Orlando, sat down with those guys. Their their brand and their entire show is popping off and, and I think that everyone should really, should really give it a listen because we've gotten away sometimes of just NHL stuff and maybe not even sports people. We interviewed Ian Bag, the comedian, and I don't know if we told everyone, we interviewed Justin Thomas recently. There was a great sit down with him for over an hour. So we've got some different things going, but these guys go in depth with the NFL lifestyle and how crazy and different it is from what Diz, Biz and I dealt with in the NHL. So hopefully everyone enjoys. And we get the tea on, on all this football stuff. Yep. Like, I don't know in-depth analysis on football and like, you know, who's banging who and, you know, who's what kind of crazy <laughs> stories are going on. So, 
we're going to sit down with them. It's going to be a good time. And as Wit kind of touched on, same dynamic where like, you know, you have Wit with the credibility who, who made all the money. And then Will's kind of like the grinder guy who bounced around from team to team. He actually, I think Will almost hit his 10th year with the Falcons and they called and he was going to sign to play his 10th year in the NFL. But because he was associated with Barstool and then Penn was still around at the time and there was gambling involved, they wouldn't allow him to sign the contract. So since then, that. and even before that, he's been grinding, but they grind hard on the media side. And now since then also Taylor's retired. So they're a juggernaut uh, in, in the football podcast world. They do a tons of content, check them out. And probably one of the most viral things this season was when Will did the the what was the breakdown of like they went the the black versus white black versus whites in the NFL yep. you know it's a, I feel like kind of cringy even saying yeah, the words true. but you know it, it it got some major major traction online so it, it'll be a good good sit down with them would you drink again if they offered you guys a uh, into the beer Olympics would you go do that I would do that this summer yeah when I'm when I'm back on the sauce okay, I'm gonna to see know. if I can go the whole hockey season this year I was gonna see if I can go a full year. But, you know, I got to have a little bit of fun in the offseason. You got to win some sandbaggers. And got to win some baggers. I think my, a lot of people are online are saying my swing's a lot better when I got the liquid glaze going on. So we're going to find out tomorrow because we're playing them in a sandbagger here in Orlando. All right, let's go, boys. Let's uh, send it over to the bus with the boys, boys. All right, before we go any further, here's a few words from our friends over at Game Time. You should not have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event, whether it's a football championship game, hockey playoff game, concert, comedy thing. should not have to worry. That's why you want to use Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, theater, all the good stuff that comes to you. I just went to a game a couple weeks ago, got hooked up for the Bruins game. Outstanding seats, game time. The experience is so simple. A couple taps, a few seconds, boom, you got the tickets there. No dealing with these conglomerates where you can't get your tickets. You have to download sites, all this stuff. No, 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 none of that. You get your tickets. It's so easy. You browse through the game time app. See all the stuff that's out there. Pick what you want. It's unbelievable. You get last minute deals, flash deals, zone deals. So easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in the area. Like I said, I just used it not too long ago for Bruins games. I had a buddy in Detroit yesterday, got some playoff action, all with game time. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Plus, you can find exclusive flash deals, sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And with zone deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Whoa. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Chicklets for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Chicklets for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Do we just start it right now? I think we just start off off with this fucking Magnolia effect, whatever business. Is it Magnolia or Man Mandela? I, I think this could Mandela go down. Effect. This could go down as as like a video, like four idiots try to talk about the Mandela effect because the description so far makes no sense to me. I think it makes perfect. Can sense. you pull up? Can you pull up one of the Mandelas? I know Fruit of the Loom is one of them. So one of the things you said is so, is, is, is something that would happen in time. That say we all we all witnessed it ten years ago, and they've scrubbed it from the internet, and therefore we we thought and remembered we saw it, but we didn't. Hand me that bottle. That's what hand Taylor me, was saying. Nobody hand has me, pictures. Hand me a pink bottle. So it's like if Pink Whitney for the longest time was like the brand and everybody drank Pink Whitney, and then 20 years later, you'd be like, hey, remember Pink Whitney? Yeah, they actually had the jersey number 20 on there or the jersey number 19. But then you look back and, and everything says 20 instead of 19. And you're like, no fucking way. I swear to God. But why would the company have changed it? I don't know. The, but, why you know why 9 11 happened why, why, <laughs> uh, what's the deal well, that took a right turn so, so why is this guy i'm blue? canadian why, I can't, why are boobs this good? seems I'm, easy I'm, to prove to me though i'm canadian i can't even say 9 11 on this podcast no you can't dude. yeah oh yeah i feel like he's kind of canadian yeah why are you always in Kelowna all the time my wife's from Kelowna, from british columbia he and hates which the is the same place as he's like i can't i'm like Kelowna's unreal he said only in the summer I mean, this guy doesn't want to no, be anywhere yeah, I near snow. I can't did, did stand Did you meet her snow. at University of Michigan? No, I met her in Leapers Fork, Tennessee. We got, I, I, we got married in like five weeks. No, we got engaged in five weeks, married in two months. 
had a kid, was pregnant in six months. So what, you just, you met her and you just instantly knew she was the one? Yeah, I was dating this girl before and we like actually just moved in together, like two days into moving in together. And then I met her and three days later, I break <laughs> up with the girl, have her parents like come get her stuff. <laughs> We flew to LA for six days, then drove to San Francisco, drove down to Arizona. She went back to Nashville. And then a week later, she's like, I miss you. I was like, I miss you too. But if you come back, you're not leaving. She comes back and I had a ring waiting for her. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Were you guys teammates at this time? No. No. no it was so, like, but this like, is when you were playing for the is, Titans. But this is a Taylor move now. We fell in love fairly quickly too. Yeah. Oh, you're I'm the kind yeah, of guy like when we're boys, like I'm going to FaceTime you every day. I'm going to text you all the time. I'm going to, you're going to be like, I, I feel like I'm dating this dude and I need to end it. <laughs> It's tough. I like literally when I met Will, I think the second day I FaceTimed you, you were yeah. red lighting in your hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And it was like an so wait, you guys, so like, you guys like chirp each other and stuff on the show or are you more just like lovers on the show? Oh, you don't watch. I watch some, but I'm very busy. You know, we go, we go, we go back and with the kids. We see the clips. We all go the clips. Yeah, yeah, flows, flows. You guys, you guys shit yeah. on each other or because we kind of go at it sometimes, but that's a hockey style. Like yeah, sometimes. You, you seem a little bit more sensitive. Are you a sensitive one? I'm I would say I'm definitely more the sensitive one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So, so you got to be careful. Hey, <laughs> but Will just, he holds vendettas, bro. Like we had a whole Gary, thing. Gary, would you say Taylor's the more sensitive one? It's okay. We got to get him a mic. Freely? Oh, this is something you've already thought about. I can tell. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Are, yeah. You the, are you the therapist? You're like, I have to go public with this now? <laughs> no question. All right. I would say if you were, to, you were to look at our group, like Will and JP are probably the least sensitive. Then Jack. Whoa, then you say, me. hang on, bro. You are. <laughs> are you saying me more than Jack? No, I think. Hey, we're uh, like therapists Jack, for the yeah, boys. No, yeah, this no, is no, no, you're talking about. Oh, oh, yeah, least, least. I'm sorry, I was going on the wrong. Yeah, yeah, hey, this is hey, uh, no, this is uh, no, Jada Pinkett up. Smith red table for your podcast right now. We're getting <laughs> yeah. fucking deep. Are you guys yeah. cheating on each other? <laughs> I would never do. Yeah, yeah. I'm loyal. I'm a loyal broad. Yeah. <laughs> when was the first time you met? When when you became teammates on the Titans? Yeah, when we signed, or when I signed with Cincinnati. <laughs> Okay, what's the inside There's joke, a joke there? there? No, what's it's the not inside joke. There's no joke. That's just he joint. just fucked up. <laughs> no, that's just from him. Oh, yeah, we joint. smoked a joint before this, yeah. so we yeah. did have a wacky <laughs> in <laughs> intro to this pod. <laughs> he said sign with Cincinnati. <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> what made you say Cincinnati? Is the worst know, what's going on in Cincinnati? I don't know. No, whenever I signed with Tennessee that year, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so so, so <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> Oh no! You I just giggle. feel so uncomfortable. They're like, ask us about our love story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, maybe he is the sensitive one. <laughs> How did it come up that you were the sensitive? Oh my god! Oh, yeah, took about a few no, I think I said you guys chirp each other. Yeah, yeah. And boom, all no. of a sudden, you're like, I'm sensitive, but no, 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 I hold the vendetta. <laughs> I assumed he was sensitive then? because he fell in love in five weeks. Oh, he was engaged bro, to his girl. I like know, that's, yeah. That's how that took that turn. Oh, but let's, oh, let's, okay, oh, so we're on to like, Cincinnati. Uh, I feel like so I'm on to Cincinnati. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like I'm like telling a story and I'm like, you know, it took three practices. I caught his eye by telling a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> he invited me over the next day and we the rest is history. Yeah, we've been boys ever since. <laughs> yeah. Now he, uh, tell a story, Will. Tell how we met. Uh, over, I mean, we met, <laughs> we met in the locker room. When I first got there and I just came in for the day and I'm like, hey, I'm Will. There was so, like the, a, so how many teams did you been on? Because you were the journeyman. He was like the first round stud. What would you make? Close to 100 million in your career? Yeah, it's not worth talking and, about and, 90. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not worth talking about. Just shy, eh? Just, just shy. shy. Hey, just we're like, going to set up a GoFundMe yeah, for, uh, <laughs> for Taylor here. Yeah. <laughs> but but, you, you, but you were the journeyman. So you started <laughs> yeah. in what, Washington? Yeah, I started in Washington. I was undrafted, practice squad for a year in Washington. And then was there for a total of five years. So, so when you're undrafted, like right away, did you know you'd get a tryout somewhere, or were you kind of like, man, I might be done playing football? No, like once the draft ended, like I knew I would be in like that late round preferred free agent category. So right when the draft ends, like your agent's already on the phone with you. Hey, there's three teams calling. In my situation, it was there's three teams just calling. It was the Bucks, the Bears, and the Redskins. And then he was like, you know, where would you like to play? I was thinking Tampa Bay with Levante. And then I thought <laughs> Chicago would be cool because it was closer than Washington. And then he calls me back and he's like, hey, you're signed with the Washington Redskins. You don't really have a say. Right. I didn't have a say at the end of the you finish line pick? like that. No, I was like, well, this is where I like to go. And then oh. he's like, all right, they get on the phone. It goes back and forth. You're going to uh, Washington. So you, you'd almost rather not be drafted at the end. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, I would say if you're not drafted, because if you go, if you're anywhere from that uh, like fifth to seventh round range, 
you still have the same possibility of getting cut as quickly as like a guy who's undrafted. Like you just don't have as you just don't have as long of a leash. So I would say if you get selected to your destination versus getting idea of where you want to kind of choose, um, then you're kind of like almost stuck there. You're kind of stuck in that situation. Yeah. Whereas in my, if you're undrafted versus being a late round guy, then you kind of have a selection of where you might want to go or where it might be favorable because those are the teams who are calling the one that they just need to fill out some depth somewhere. So then you end up like after your five years, you end up in, in with the Tennessee Titans and you guys meet, it's it's instant love. And then did you guys, <laughs> did you guys talk about maybe one day starting a podcast together? How, was that even a thing then? Because when he mentioned it to me first, I didn't even know what the fuck a podcast was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we, uh, when we first met, like we would have like these breakfast clubs with, it'd be us two and a guy named Mike Campanero. And we like talk about like Joe Rogan's podcast, the fighter and the kid. Ben and that's Greenfield. like, yeah. Ben Greenfield, like a bunch of biohacking stuff. And then literally like the Titans just started a podcast called OTP official Titans podcast. And I had to go on it, but I just brought Will with me as like, <laughs> just because I want in my plus one, the I guess, support, yeah. the support animal just yeah. going around. Don't right. pet him. Don't pet him. Don't even look at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they let you on planes with him too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then like after, after the season, uh, Will was like, I really want to do a podcast. Like, let's do it. Cause he's been wanting to do it for a while. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll go. And then like literally two days later, I got on a plane to California to go train for three months. And then he called me like uh, two months later and he's like, Hey, do you want to do this? Or do you not want to do this? Like, what's the deal? And uh, then I came back and we just started it up like probably what a month later, like yeah. right in May. Yeah, because you got in right there in early April or mm -hmm. April right in time for OTAs. So we still can like get together until there was like kind of like a free weekend. But you are looking around for studios and all that. I was just going to quickly bring up though, like the name is important. And I think the name has an unreal ring to it. How did that come about? And then you guys had that bus, like the branding aspect of it. Who, who thought of all that? There was like this local gal in Chicago who was throwing ideas about branding, like helping like a little boutique branding agency versus paying for somebody like, you know, that's bigger. Um, when we had the bus, we were going around with, just different ideas. And some of them involve the boys. And there's part of us that didn't want to bring in the for the boys mantra just because we had grew it in the locker room with the Titans. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of feel like it's you and your teammates saying, and now that we're going out here to- <laughs> Yeah, they're like- to capitalize your brand. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it came, became like a thing in 2018 with the Titans, like just being like the boy, like you'd walk into the cold tubs, the boy, and then- Break it down. Five yeah. guys, oh, yeah. like the boy. And then so, it was steamer the after a big yeah. win, the boys, yeah. the boys. And the bus, like we kind of just fell into, like we had this other production crew that we were like starting with and we were talking about like studio space. And one of them was like, hey, there's a bus outside. And I was late to the meeting. Well, because uh, at the initially it was going to be called the Den Podcast. Working the title. Den. And Taylor always said. No, the Den? The yeah, Den? the Den. The Den. Because I have a fascination with wolves. But Taylor's like, <laughs> Taylor would always say working title. That's a Every working title. Is that why you have a wolf tattooed on you? Yeah, he, he, yeah, his, yeah. Yeah. Just my tip of the cap to Will. <laughs> <laughs> just my, oh, my, oh, my love. Oh yeah, just that. That's for Will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. They had this bus, dude, and Will was there first. He's like, when Taylor sees this, he's going to love it. And sure enough, I pulled up. I was like, I even if it doesn't work, I'll just keep the yeah, bus. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy keep it. in my backyard. 90 million awesome. stock here. Take it. it cost me Let's two grand. Let's not bring that up. Let's not bring that up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be easy. easy. Mom, Not, but, mom. Like 97, but yeah. When cool. you were, when it was, when it began, you're still playing, right? Yeah, we were both still playing. Oh, okay. So, but at one point when you were tired and you were, you were, you were into it, right? When you got screwed on year 10, we got to go into that. Yeah, Goodell yeah. fucked you over. Yeah. But when you came on and he's done playing and you're still playing, it's got to be like kind of hard, right? Because you're, you're still busy as shit. So you had to kind of carry the load a little bit. Mm. Would you say? Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely carry the load for sure on a whole bunch of things, like setting up the whole thing, like being kind of being the brains behind it. But when we started like our deal, it was like, I'll just come and make sure that I'm there for the most of the podcast. I'll do it, blah, blah, blah. And we like, we're in this phase of, cause you guys know how it is when you're playing your sport, you're so like solely focused on it. And you but know, I like, could never I, do something I, I, I like would this. Do yeah, it. Yeah, the I wouldn't do noise. it because I was still playing. Yeah. Up. And there's no way I could come on and let it fly even the same. Yeah, and if you exactly. guys lost, it would have been sucked. dashed three, three games in oh, a row. I'm not come on right. slinging it, you know? Wait, that happened. Yeah, like oh, yeah. you're not comfortable. You're like, I'm going, I got to sling it around about the NFL and our team. Mm -hmm. I played like shit, we lost. We played terrible. Like if I like gave up a sack, we lost the game or whatever. And then to go in the pond and be like, hey, how we doing guys? Yeah, this yeah, week yeah, yeah. Here's the, the clown point. show. Yeah, bro, yeah, you know, yeah exactly. You know bro. De Derrick Henry's dick is, guys. Yeah, yeah, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. You guys have a meat peek in the shower? Yeah. But bro, uh -huh. even, even the first year we thought about, because I was just doing like our very first year, um, 
Taylor, that's when the PED thing happened. So he was suspended the first part of the year. Oh, no. I, uh, what else? What else was going on then? What were you on, Viagra? I was like when uh, we know the Titans were also four and two. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you Titans doing, Vi Viagra? No, nah, I didn't. I, I took uh, Extends for a <laughs> no. month in college. It never worked. I like I would last way longer, but like my piece never, oh, got, it never got bigger. Yeah, me and my hey, buddy like, just longer, tried it That's out. half the battle for me. Yeah. I got to be do the counting the numbers the and the sheep of, yeah, in my yeah, head. Yeah, the cold shower. Just to get out of two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then, so we were, uh, they were losing. <laughs> I didn't even hear what he said. <laughs> yeah, just quietly to myself. I've never lasted long. <laughs> in the corner. Oh, that's a oh, big issue on yeah. the Spit and Chicklets podcast. Yeah, yeah. Huge, huge. The big one. Yeah. Huge. It's, it's like hockey, 45 seconds yeah. and off. I was yeah, broke hard, for the hard, quick shift. Hard, quick shift. The thing I, uh, the thing I failed for was called the Austrian. And it was like, it's like kind of all over the, it was all over the UFC at one point, like a bunch of college kids failed for it. So I did this lie detector test. Big Cat loves talking about it because I had like this, you know, PSA thing on the bus and I was like, I start crying on it. And now like being like five, six years removed, it's like, you're a fucking idiot. But at the time, oh it my was God. such why, a big why, why are we, You're a little sensitive. Look, I'm saying, yeah, I am like a sensitive guy. Well, no, no, so much, no, no, because people online will label you a cheater forever. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. a scarlet letter. Oh yeah, I yeah. would have been, I would have cried about it too. And I was, yeah, I was you on, didn't do anything. I, like, I was on, I was on Jack 3D for a bit, which was a band stop. Yes, bro. And, <laughs> and, I, hey, that's and I had nuts. no idea. And Yans is like, yo, you know that's, you know that's banned, <laughs> right? I'm like <laughs> walking around all jacked in camp, and I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. and and I think I took a piss test and somehow beat it really? at that point because you always take one in training camp. But to go back to what you're saying if i would have ever tested positive like you you the 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 online scrutiny is brutal i'm sure you were it's getting awful, blowback. Dude. it's terrible and the thing like going back like when you fail your ped like the, there's like no way to get out of it there's only been one guy in the nfl history to get out of a ped and he like went to mexico and had like 14 cheeseburgers and then there was like a tainted substance alert about the meat in Mexico in this specific <laughs> spot. And he had receipts. Like that's the only way he got out Sounds of it. Sounds like a hell, like a hell yeah. of a made up story. A hell of a made up story that just panned <laughs> out. But like with uh, with supplements, like nothing's regulated by the FDA. So anything right. you take, it could say on the label, like it's got only X, Y, and Z, but they can put whatever they want in it. And once they do that, like uh, you can get popped and then you go test like the next batch and it's just a whole clean slate all of a sudden. Okay. Was so it, it was like a whole bunch of now. And there's certifications today. like you have to do NSF certified products, but even NSF, if it were to pop or dust or anything like that, then the NSF isn't like liable for you to like be in trouble from the NFL. Yeah. And the shitty thing was, is like but, when I, when I popped for Austrian, it was like a trace amount, which means you got no benefit. And I think if I'm going to fail for a PED, like I want all, I want all of it. Be oh, like the, that's yeah, like, yeah. that's yeah. like the dusting thing is like, as long as something like any can gets like dusted with anything, mm. you just get popped on any level you do. It is like that stamp. Because it does it, right? It like you're like in in our minds, it's like yo, my reputation is on the line, and you're gonna um, say like oh, you're just gonna label me a cheater. Uh, how many players in the NFL do you think are cheating right now with substance? Not as many as when we were younger. Okay, dude, my rookie year, we played the Ravens, and uh, I went to like take a shit before the game, and I pulled the toilet paper in the thing, and a syringe fell out, and I. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is nuts. So you're saying what? That's an away team or a home team? Do I think it might have been our team. I don't know. I, oh. It was just like a syringe. Dude, I think, I think there's not as much as probably people think, but yeah. more than we know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. think, think if you just wanted to like, when just say like Bobo, like to just use the example of all, like how they were working with the Titans. He is not going to like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's no, not, Bobo's getting no, called out? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. No, he's like this IV. He's got uh, this company, Arite. But he started by he just like working that. with uh, working with players, like working with us. And then he, you know, he grew. But think back then, like if we just kept Bobo, like just to ourselves and nobody else knew about it, like you could be doing whatever. Yeah, as long as it was like stayed out of your system. Quick. Yeah, oh, because he's, yeah, it's getting out. Because he's not, yeah, because you're just kind of like, you know, where you're just like working the game because there are things out there that can like get in and out <laughs> of your system. <laughs> who in like was 12 one, hours. Who was one yeah. guy you guys knew was on it and, and you had to go up against them every game and you're like, motherfucker, this guy's just like, oh, I I'm no fucked. Clue. No. There was always Probably Roger uh, Saffold for me. Roger was like that. <laughs> there was always rumors about JJ Watt. Like, I don't want to turn, I don't want to say anything about his name, but like guys would be like, there's no way, there's no way. He's like, so that. strong, so this, so that. Like, Torn rotator cuff, torn bicep, torn tricep. Yeah, and he, he back comes back eight like weeks. eight weeks yeah. later. Ray Lewis is a guy that had like the, the deer antler split. Yeah. The deer antler split. Hey, who was but the, I think he got, I think that the, that's documented he was doing that. 
Yeah, just Ray go back. Lewis? Just yeah. go back. J- this yeah, is allegedly JJ. This is allegedly. I never. You tore your like. No, hey, let me apologize. Hey, we're gonna, get, we're gonna get a juicy story here. Hey, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was gonna say. Obviously, oh, he was that ridiculously talented and jacked, and you had to think something. It's not even like it's a bad thing. You're like, mm. this dude has to be doing something. Has to be doing. I something. could see how that at least would be a question. Who's the dude? The black dude lives in Arizona that played for the Steelers. James Harris. James Harrison, bro. <laughs> no, that guy. That guy. That guy was he's a just a rolling he's, ball he's of still putting out Instagram <laughs> oh, videos. Bro. I'm God. like, how are you he squatting six like, plates? Oh, that's my phone. He was smashing people's heads in in those old Steelers games. I, I, I was on the Penguins when he was there. He was a <laughs> legit killer. So, <laughs> so are you saying that he was for sure doing it? He just, you just, no, we're talking about, you just see guys and you're like, holy shit. I think so. Because like back. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on the record saying it. Okay. Hey, back in 2012, be, like before 2012, I guess I didn't test certain levels of like HGH oh, or whatever. Oh, it was the okay. wild, wild And west. then they changed it in 2012. So if you were taking something okay. and then they tested you, your baseline would be super high. And as long as you didn't fluctuate higher or lower, then you'd be cool. Right. So it's all like a, I don't know. It's a game within a game within Spit a game. Chicklets going to be starting beef with like ex NFLers who are still on the juice. Oh, oh god, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> it's not. Imagine good at me, all. you, and Ray Lewis being like, "What's up, Ray? <laughs> oh, Can no. you uh, address what the buzz with the boys said?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's an amazing brand you guys have built. I had a blast. I went down on the bus. You were you. No, I got interviewed at your your parents' mm-hmm. place in, in Scottsdale. Yeah, down in Arizona. Yeah. yeah. So we've we've each been on your podcast and you hadn't been on your theirs. There's a million questions I want to ask you guys about as far as NFL and I know, I know. And then like well, I'm interested with you because then you're the high pick. What'd you get drafted? I was drafted eleventh overall. Eleventh overall. So going in yeah. and actually tell tell um he mentioned the story before about when you picked up offensive line in high school. Like all yeah, of a sudden dude. it was late. Yeah. So I like played one year of football like when I was like eight and I was a corner. I was like the I was like a fast white kid for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, Hell yeah! And then on uh, his on his what's white that? team yeah, secondary, I probably would have been, been like that. I was like that 80 poster child. I was always playing in the grass and stuff like that, and I just would hot kids every once in a while. But I didn't play again until my freshman year of high school, and I got in a bunch of legal trouble. And my dad's like, "You need to play football." So I went and played football, and I was like this nose tackle, like hard working, gritty, hard nosed white guy. That's exactly what I was, like limited athletically. And then my junior year going to my senior year, I transferred. I went from Cave Creek, Arizona to Scottsdale, Arizona. Went to Chaparral High School. And uh, they made me play offensive tackle. And I played like two games. And I put like sent just my two games of raw film and like sent it out. And like I got 20 offers in two weeks, three weeks, became an All-American. It was like the greatest ascension of all time. It was insane. What uh, would you get in trouble for? Uh, assault, theft, battery, and robbery. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> I love, yeah, God damn. part of so, yeah, wow. that's what I. God damn, man. I, I thought, thought you were coming with something heavier. <laughs> yeah, no, so you bring the street cred to the podcast <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. as well for Buster. What I the love, fuck do you do, Will? I, I, I no, no, I got a MIP Holy. minor position. <laughs> you got an MIP. I mean, man. you were yeah, hanging yeah, out yeah. in Cave Creek, not downtown Phoenix. I know, so. dude. But here's the thing: is like I say, assault, theft, battery, and robbery, and I kind of sound badass. Really, what it was is I got. I took some kid's iPod and then he asked for it back and I hit him. And those are just the charges. Like it's like the most bitch made thing ever after. <laughs> Holy Christ. Yeah. So That's I, just got, I, I got probation for a year. Yeah. And that was, that was it. That's like when you lie on your resume. Yeah. 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 You know, I just did that. I mean, everybody think I was way cooler than I was and then had to come have my come to Jesus Holy talk. Shit. Right now. Did they send that in with the game film? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. By the way, so he's high? got a criminal record. You're going to love this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got a 1.6 GPA. Oh. He's fucking right <laughs> oh, yeah. where you want to be. Great student athlete. <laughs> he's yeah. he's a perfect the, uh, offensive line, but he's, perfect. He's, now you got the origin story out here. You can try and really beef that up next time. Yeah. I got to get something going. Like why the assault matter? You just come up with some wild just rob shit. the guy like the towns. <laughs> so I was actually in Boston. All right. was in that movie. He's a big role. The chef. So how is he always getting these acting roles? He was in the town. Yeah. Wow. He was in the town. Yeah, yeah he was he, in uh, the, the scene with, what's her name? Uh, Blake, Blake Lively. Lively. And what? John Hamm. Sharing the screen with Blake Lively. Can you believe it? Did he have lines or was he just chilling? No, in the he was just oh, a no, cook. no, no, no. You just saw the, the back of his head, but he crushed it. And I'm, I'm, no, you saw his forehead. But he actually now, he just finished going to a premiere of a movie he's he's in. Yeah. So it's like he's he's becoming a full blown thespian. Does he, <laughs> does he actually, he has lines? Like he, or is yeah, like a youth this, one he, this one he does. This one he does. And he's not acting as himself. So it's actually a role. So he's he's diving in this. It's good. That's so badass. It's good. It's that awesome. So I, think, I think he should do acting. Yeah, eventually. why not? I think he could crush yeah, it. Maybe, yeah, maybe eventually. What would you, what would you like, uh, if you had to pick a role that you would just love to do, what would it be? Uh, I, Johnny Sins? Maybe like, yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know, maybe like a yeah, like a psycho, like get the snap in it. Like I like uh, Raging Bull. I'm a big De Niro guy. Okay, like kind of like that. Hell yeah, yeah. I like that. Maybe Would you want to go like uh, like actual crazy guy or like something like the Joker where it's like- I more think like if sinister. I ever wanted to get serious about it, I would want to try my balls off in like a um, an improv class because I respect people who go and like sharpen their tools. Like I've never done that. I think I'd be nervous as fuck going into an improv class. And especially because I like I smoke a lot and then, you know, I'd probably like my anxiety would go through the roof kind of like when we started this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> but it settled down nice and I'm it's having a blast good, now. Right. Landed was, a little bit. It's a good I time. Know, I got but nervous I, before we smoked. But, but I was like, but, God, but, I'm going to be so paranoid on this podcast. I, like I, I, we've done like silly commercials. I, I, I was trying to think of what I want to say, so I didn't hear what you said. If, and if it was, funny. that's all right. That's okay. That's okay. But, it probably wasn't uh, that funny. I, we've done commercials before where I like cha the challenge. Mm -hmm. I like the like the anxiety spike before you go into it, the unknown, and and it's different. Like I love doing the podcast, but it becomes a little bit monotonous. 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 Mon I like monotonous. how you say yeah. it. I like how now. You say yeah, that's like, yeah, well said, bro. Would you ever like? What would you, would you? What would you divulge into that's different than what you do in normal life? Different day. Like, do you ever act? acting? No. <laughs> no. You didn't like the question? <laughs> no. I'll just Did I jam you up? Like, oh, shit. We acted in the commercial with them. That's right. That's right. That's yeah, yeah. Well, I took down the RA. Yeah. What would you do? I mean, we'd act. <laughs> I, yeah, I think acting. Matter of fact, matter of fact, think, matter of fact, there's a script written up for us right now. Yeah. Was it Bad, Moon, to the Bad Moon Rising? Yeah. Stealing the Tennessee Titans slogan. That's the movie line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The boys. Yeah. yeah. Well, what is the, what is the Copyright script? Copyright the script? Uh, it's called Bad Moon Rising. This guy named Cameron Duddy. He's like the, is he, he's the bassist for Kings of Leon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not Kings of Leon. Uh, Midland. 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 And uh, they're like a country band. Guys are incredible if you guys haven't heard them. But he, apparently him and his brother, they're writers and they love the podcast. So like one day he hits us up and he comes with a 90 page script about like, it's like uh, Blue Mountain State meets Friday the 13th. Yeah. Well, oh, this, yeah. you guys yeah. should do that. You guys are getting murdered. Great analogy. I don't think, oh, well, we don't, we don't I, know no yet. No spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. Okay. I, I don't, have you read the whole script? I've read half. <laughs> <laughs> the script, it's actually good. And the whole idea is that like, we're like a D3, we're a couple of D3 guys and our coach has a heart attack because I lose it on somebody. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I'm just giving the idea. <laughs> I, I like, say, I like you're, really, you're really well, starting giving and the we've never, we've never won a football game. And so like somehow I become, we become the coaches and we, we like trick our way into this elite camp to coach these other kids and there's murders that start happening at the camp and it's a fucking, <laughs> like it's actually kind of nuts. They become wolves. <laughs> oh, fuck. Or, wait, 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 is it wolves or vampires? Wolves. Hey, just relax. Um, <laughs> now okay, you're so, giving it so, away. So you well, fuck you was painting well, the picture. I was, telling, too. I was just giving like a little elevator. Pitch. No, that was the trailer. That was was good, Scorsese's was watching right now, dude. <laughs> we're good, fucking straight, we're ready. Straight to DVD. But I yeah, think that yeah. would be fun for the literally the way you just put it. It sounded spot on. Yeah. Like the anxiety part, like wanting to lean into it because you're like, oh, it's yeah. kind of like a challenge. Think of the think of the idea of of I, I keep cutting you off, but no, no, you're good. Think of the idea of like getting a script, being like you're playing X, Y, and Z, someone totally different from your personality, yeah. and then truly getting people that watch you on the screen to believe that you are. I know that's yeah, that's yeah. that's, that's awesome. like the coolest thing in the world to And that yeah. you like worked at it. Yeah. You like worked at it and you're like, what was your process mm -hmm. there? And you have to like figure out whatever your process is to get yeah. into that character. Yeah. Oh, That's getting, awesome. We're getting deep. And that I, shit's I, dope. Everything you said is bang on. I love it. You do, a, you do a little bit. Well, you, like a, when we do those pink When you make me. Yeah, when I, yeah, when, when I no, make them. No, I, I'm not very comfortable at, at, at doing that stuff. Like I would much rather. I remember when the, the podcast, we first started doing video. I'm like. I could just be like a podcast and never, I, like I'm cool with never being a video, but I, I, you know, you end up realizing that it's so important now, the YouTube and everything we do with it, but I, I would never want to act ever. I do respect the hell out of it. I know I couldn't do it. The memorization, all that. I just, I also wouldn't be good at it. Do you think- Is it because uh, it scare you? Do you, yeah. Does it scare me? It's got to be. I'm if you want to avoid it that much. It scares me like this would be horrendous and I'd get ripped on by all my buddies. Like, I don't, don't want to do it. Sometimes you land on your face too. But I don't yeah. want to like, do it. There's been a few I, things I, I put out that it. I didn't want to put out. I, get, I have no desire whatsoever to do that because I just couldn't handle it. So yeah, I'm scared of shit. You called it. <laughs> um, do, you, do you still get nervous in front of cameras? <laughs> no, not in front of cameras. But like we do live shows. Have you guys done any of those? Yeah. Those yeah, things are awesome. Started. So I think we'll be doing our fourth yeah. in a week. I get the most anxiety. These things, those. that's some, that's oh, some yeah. anxiety. Uh, when I got the other takes, when I'm like one take, two take, oh, we can go up to a hundred till I get this thing. I can handle it. But the live shows, those will get your heart pumping. I'm the opposite. When there's like a, we have like the Chevy commercial we did and they had lines for us. We, I think I had like four lines. 
And I kept fucking up like the second to last line. Yeah. Last line I was right after you. I was like, he doesn't know how to read. Dude, oh, bro. I, can't, I, I like, literally am the worst reader. Like, I, like uh, public speaking, I have no issue with. Really? Reading out loud in front of people. I had to stop doing If you gave me a Dr. Seuss book right now, I'd shit my pants. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. I really, so I would. Hey, <laughs> you've done well the last <laughs> I've month. I've better, but the nerves would still be there. Hey, the yeah. last month with the ad read, you've been smooth. Yeah, I've been reading. So they took ad reads away from me because I would sit there sometimes and I'd go 20, 20 times and I'd be like, fuck, yeah. fuck. Cause like the words jump out at me. I think it, it's like some people call it dyslexic. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I like, just have a hard time reading. So we heard about how you started. Like it was kind of like a, a whirlwind. Like you, you weren't really a player. Like how was your upbringing in, in football? Oh, was it right spin. from, from <laughs> like Tim bits or tykes and. Yeah. I mean, tackle football started like fourth grade. I like, I've been obsessed with football for as long as the la the first thing I can remember like loving was my dad was into the Cowboys in the nineties, who wasn't? And they'd win the Super Bowl. They were winning the Super Bowl like in like 95 or 96, 97. And uh they'd win and my dad would order the VHS stuff that they would call that you'd call on the TV, like celebrate the year with the Cowboys with the like the documentary. Like the sports illustrator. Some of the gear. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that would come and we would watch that stuff together. So I was just like obsessed with football at like an early age where he'd talk about Walter Payton. We'd play in the backyard, we'd do all this stuff. So I was always gung-ho on wanting to like play football my entire life. So going from growing up there and then going to Nebraska, getting to go to Nebraska was big time. And then you go through Nebraska and you're getting close to getting to the NFL. So everything that you've ever wanted- Is happening. You're like, is happening, right? And you, you want to be drafted so bad. Um, were, you, were you a scholarship player? Yeah. yeah full yeah. ride? Yeah. Oh, how about, how about, how, football's all full ride across the board. Everybody. Oh, really? Unless, yeah, unless, you, unless you're like you walk D2 on, unless you don't get an offer. Right. Oh, it's I, oh, you you oh, you can give like certain years in hockey as opposed to like full ride or nothing. Right, in like baseball, you got to split scholarships. Nine. So, wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that, but but you you were expected to like like do big things there. Like you were fired up. Like you were obviously a sick recruit going to Nebraska. Like yes. It's a big deal. Yeah. And then to, to be able to get a scholarship telling your parents that, like how good did that feel? I mean, oh, amazing, dude. It's like the best because that's all you want is to like earn a scholarship or, you know, when you're a young athlete, you're like, you know, your parents are like, oh, if we could just get, get school paid pay for, for it. Yeah. It. Like if another parent was like, hey, he's pretty good. Like, oh, maybe he'll, you know, that line of getting your, getting school paid for. So when they started happening, you're just fired up because like, yo, I'm going to go to this level that you've already like dreamed about and fantasized about like playing all the NCAAs before you go to college and just like loving certain teams and following them along. And you start to get scholarships by these teams. Like I remember when I got Notre Dame finally at the very end, but Notre Dame uh, going to Catholic school into like fourth grade, our principal would always, she'd go to one game a year and she'd bring back memorabilia for the entire class. So you just like, I love Notre Dame growing up. So all of these fantasies about wanting to play, you're finally like accomplishing those things by going to college. Do you guys, do you guys do the, the trips beforehand? Like hockey guys, they go there and like the, the boys visits. take them out official visit. Oh yeah, like, I feel you, like you probably got better like, stories than me. No, I just get drunk with like oh, the, whoever was hosting. How many? How many different my, visits did you go on? You said you got twenty offers. Yeah, I only went on two. And I went it, to I went to Minnesota because my dad went to Minnesota, and I literally almost committed. Did and he play football there? Yeah, he walked on there. He's got the whole you know. If I didn't break my leg, I'd be you know. He's got that story. He's he would have been the man. But uh, I went to I went to Minnesota and then I went to Michigan and I was like yeah like Jake Long was uh, the first overall pick, two thousand eight oh, yeah. which was like my junior year, and uh, my dad's like yo this guy you could be like him, wear seventy seven like him blah, blah blah so I was like yo I'll just go to Michigan they just put dudes out because once I got an offer my first offer was Utah State, and I was like uh, I remember the coach came out to me and he was like hey we we love to have you blah 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 and I was like oh thanks man appreciate it. my coach was like hey what do you think because I didn't know they offered me. I was like, yeah, it was awesome, man. Hopefully I can get an offer. Like, oh no, they offered you. And I knew, I was like, right then there, I was like, oh, I'm going to the NFL. Like that's no like, shit. it's like one of those things where I feel like when you're 15, 16, you don't like, you don't know the path you're going to go on. And you also don't really care at that time. Like you, you're like, oh, I have all the time in the world. Truly like when I got offered by Utah state, it was like the most clear path. Like it was like so obvious to me. I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the NFL. <laughs> Like that is it. I went, I got to college and they're like, what do you want to do after college? I was like, oh, I'm going to the NFL. <laughs> and they're like, well, you know, statistically, I was like, no, no, no. Put me in the easiest classes. I'm going to the NFL. No, that's like, awesome it was, though. Yeah. It was and awesome. And then it was dude. all, ha it was all happening. Like everything was happening. Everything you thought of. Oh yeah. It literally, I mean, besides the win loss category at Michigan, like it went exactly as planned. 
It was nuts. When when you what, did you start as a freshman? I redshirted and then I started my retro freshman year, but I've started four years. Yeah, so that's like all of a sudden Big Ten football, like, and you're just in the mix, getting better and better. And then by the time your junior year, sophomore year, you turn pro, did you finish four years? I finished four. I, I should have left after my junior year. Would have got drafted higher? Probably. No shit. Yeah, because I was, uh, it's all like, obviously there's a talent level, Projection but there's also like, all right? pro, it's like the projection was the same. However, like the needs based on the the first five yeah, teams, yeah, six yeah. teams were like the first three, three of the first four picks were offensive linemen. So to me, I was like, if I, cause I would have, te I tested really well at the combine. I knew that was like my bread and butter. So I already had the film and I knew I was going to like show things that people haven't seen yet. So I thought, oh, I would have, I would have skyrocketed, but you know how it is. Like when you're at college or did you go to college? Uh, no, I went to Davenport University. We don't need to talk. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't need to talk about it. But going going back to Michigan, like yeah. when you when you were brought there, was it a factory? Like, did they know how to explain to you? And every day you were going in there, you were like learning so much. Like, where it was like a, the, one of the best universities you could have gone to to take that ride. No. Really? It was, really? Well, Michigan, Michigan at the time, like they had uh, obviously you they see had, the facilities now. I mean, no, the, you but see, it was down years, right? It was the whole time I was there. It was like oh nine to thirteen, and like the years that Michigan fans refused to acknowledge. Like we were terrible back then. So I don't say it because like lack of Michigan, but it was like Rich Rodriguez was my first coach who came from West Virginia, and they ran the spread. And Michigan was so used to be like Big Ten football, run it down your throat type stuff. So he didn't get a good night's sleep yeah, the whole time he was right. there. Then they bring in Brady Hoke when they really wanted Jim Harbaugh, and he like so you were dealing with all these different coaches. Yeah in different systems yeah different coaches and different well the systems weren't too bad it was just the fact that like stability these coaches, yeah, it's not like it wasn't like culture. the michigan that culture, michigan yeah. is now with right, jim harbaugh right. or lloyd carr or bo shembeck like all these other cats james that like <laughs> james dobson <laughs> i thought you were saying the strength coach for uh, oh no mike barwis though he was a yeah. he was a g so do you think that going through that where it was a bit of a gong show helped you from like a mental perspective like be able to i don't know that's a good question i was i was truly like solely focused on just making it to the NFL. So like any coach that told me anything, like, hey, work on this before practice, five minutes before I would do that every single okay. practice. That's like how I was it got just, done. Yeah, I was very extremely focused. I partied really hard in college, but like I would never let it sacrifice like what I was doing in the weight room. I was, you know, I got after it. You were, you were, you were doing it. You were having fun on and off the field. Oh, you were yeah. getting it done. I would, yeah, I'd go on, I'd go on some bender sometimes and it would be like a test. Like I think to myself, okay, if I lose one run today against the offensive lineman, then I've been I've been going too hard. And if it ever happened, I would be like, okay, I got to tail it back here. Like <laughs> the weird delusions in your head, the psychotic games you're playing with yourself constantly. Okay, uh, what were you playing in in high school when you went to to college? Like how what positions were you in? Just oh, in high school. Well, just because like he, he oh, knew, bringing he, up his offensive no, high school no, no. he was an offensive lineman. He school. knew he was going to be that. All like you obviously, receiver. you obviously in pro didn't play the positions you were playing in in high school and then college. Well, in uh, in high school, I was still playing linebacker. I was playing like safety in my earlier years. Then I was linebacker my senior year, and then I did play some offensive ball to you know wit, uh, wit want me to tell the stories about my all state <laughs> days. I don't think we have enough time for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like um, Al Bundy. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> but going to Nebraska, you just solely focused on I, I focused just on linebacker. And for me, it was I, I sit here and listen to Taylor and I'm like, man, if I could have fucking just ripped around, I feel like I had to be like weirdly obsessive with obsessive with doing like all the things like all the way from start to finish. Right. To put myself in a position. Um, so, yeah, you just worked your dick off basically to get where you were. Yeah, I feel like I had to like, I like as far as the tangibles that are talked about in the NFL, like I knew all my like numbers and all the tangible things that can be graded was like a, a lower round undrafted grade. But I knew my edge with everybody, with whoever was in front of me or just coming up through college, like my edge was playing from the neck up. So I felt like I had to just constantly pour into the playbook, yeah, understanding yeah. what the offense is doing, like talking to like coaches, helping me study, helping me learn how to watch film. Because I felt like that was where I would find my edge where I'm a step slow. Well, if I don't have any yeah. of the steps then it'll be just as efficient as the yep. guy in front of me. And if I do it right every time, the moment that they mess up a rep or two and then I start getting thought about, then they mess up again, calm, go get your shot, and you don't mess up on any of it, then that's where you can start to edge out. For me in my journey, that's where I had to kind of like try and edge out, survive in advance like every year. You weren't given any jobs, really. No, not, right? not really. The only time I felt comfortable was 2000 and. 
2015 and 16, because I was I was supposed to compete for a starting job where I was injured in preseason, so I wasn't able to actually compete. Then I ended up taking over the job that year, but I knew I was going to be in Washington, uh, which always made like a player feel good when you know you're not going to be cut. Yeah, like you're part of the you're part of the future. Um, and then I, when I played well in 15, I got to start and be the guy in 16 because they didn't fortunately didn't draft anybody then. Um, so you get kind of that luxury of like, oh yeah. You, you know, when you sit and you watch the draft and you're like, fuck, hopefully they don't get somebody in my position. Cause if you do, you're like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but when, t when those guys wouldn't get drafted in the high rounds or if they were like fifth to seventh, you're like, all right, I'm going to get a real shot to beat this motherfucker out versus somebody who would be higher than you. Yeah. That's interesting because we always talk on our show about salaries in the NHL and we're hoping they get higher and NFL salaries are incredible, but you guys just get cut. And like, there's, you can't do that. You can get bought out in the NHL. You're still getting paid though. And I've always said the NFL is all this money, but the fact that you can just get cut at any moment, that's just the panic every day. Like you talk about, I would, I would not be comfortable going through that, which I'm sure there was times in camp you were probably dealing with that, right? Oh yeah. I mean, so it's like stressful as shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you don't want to like, you know, <clears throat> the first year on the Titans, it was, I got a, like a six month lease versus you get a year long lease. Uh, because you want to know if you're going to have the opt to stay there. Now, going to Tennessee, I felt pretty comfortable. Uh, but yeah, in those first couple of years, like when you're renting as a young player, you're kind of like hoping you're not locked into some year long lease to where if you do happen to get cut and you got to go somewhere else, you're playing double rent, you're on the lower stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, you think about those things. One of the things we want to talk to you guys about was like current drama in the NFL. And you were on a team where, <laughs> where probably, why are you laughing like that? RG <laughs> starts <laughs> some of it. RG3 and Jay Gruden that's, were hey, just that's going That's Will's favorite like uh, sports personality. Who? RG3. <laughs> RG3. <laughs> He fucking love. He loves he, him. He's a, like he, has he, he been on the bus? No, no. He's been on yeah, Zoom. He, he was on during the. Uh, so you, so your teammates COVID with him. Year. RG, yeah, yeah during yeah. his big year, his opening year. No, not his rookie year. Okay. His year, rookie year when he was like the offensive rookie of the year. Yeah, and he took he took him to the playoffs. Like yeah, he was an absolute monster that year. I didn't get to like witness those. Um, <laughs> what? No, nothing. I think I'll we're gonna hear like about the joke. downfall. Yeah, so he tore his knee. He tore his knee. He tore his ACL in the playoffs so in january and he shouldn't have been playing in the game he was right right there's a lot of drama behind that, that was, story it was my first year retired i watched every game i was like this is the most exciting player ever. i remember he had an end around td run 50 yes. yards and then he hurt his knee and then they played him and he busted his knee in that it was horrible weather and like oh, the, yeah, field, the field in the nightmare. field and he and he probably was never the, the same again yes, i would dude. say yes because the, all of that there's a lot of drama like before that game because apparently there was kind of like a a div there was division on if he should play, if he shouldn't play, then, you know, as a player, you kind of just get feel pressure. If, if yes. everybody's kind of expecting you to play, you're like, kind of like, yeah. well, fuck, I, I don't want to make people think that I'm just letting everybody down. So you kind of get forced into playing. He tears his ACL and you know, you don't, I don't know at all because I, I was becoming a rookie that year. Um, but he placed an expectation on himself. He did like this, this run with Adidas talk about all in for week one. And week oh, one, you tear it. your knee in January, you're trying to be RG3 in September. And if you're going to do training camp, that's eight months. Like, how are you going to turn an ACL around that quickly? But um, he's on the he's on the team that year. We go three and 13. Uh, that was my rookie year. And then there's a lot of question marks on if he should be the guy because there was Kirk Cousins also got drafted in that same class with RG. RG was the first round pick. Kirk was the fourth round pick. There's uh, there's stuff out there saying that Shanahan preferred Kirk over Rob. And then when they go three and 13 and Shanahan gets fired, Jay Gruden coming in understands that there's a, a level of, hey, should Kirk be the guy going in over Rob? The last staff kind of thought that they got fired. Does that mean the owner likes RG more? Like there was always that wow. drama circling around it. So you can kind of see where Jay and RG could have beef, right? Because Jay might be thinking, all right, Kirk is much better for the system that I'm bringing in here than RG. How much of a leash am I going to am I going to give RG? There's a competition going on all year long type of thing. <clears throat> and RG felt like Jay didn't really mess with him as much because he'd call him out in uh, he'd call him out in the uh, in the media if he'd have a bad game. Like there's a situation where Rob, that's the one that was coming up this past week, where Rob threw his teammates under the bus. So there was just a lot of drama that year. And when Kirk ended up taking over in the middle of the year, that was the the quarterback on Netflix. That was the you like that year. So we went on a run and made the playoffs that year. So that was where RG, did we make the playoffs that year? 
Either but that's way, where you that's where winning. that's where RG goes, uh, you know, to the bench, and then ultimately uh, they didn't pick up his contract the next year. So you kind of just RG's kind of had he had the career he's had, and it's he probably looks back, I would assume, and thinks like, man, if I would have made a couple different decisions here and there versus feeling whether it's pressure to play on the field, pressure with the expectation coming back. That you just probably think about the, those. The, hold some the, grudges the, a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, but oh, thing, you think so? You think RG three's poopy pants in this situation because uh, uh, Gruden said online like, how could they hang uh, Jalen Hurts? Jalen Hurts out to dry like that, and then RG three came over the top, basically saying like, oh, you did it to us. Right, right, and right. And what right. was your experience with Jay Gruden? Was it like oh, that? Oh, Jay, no, Jay was awesome. There's, there's no way that. Like, if you know Jay or you look through his timeline or anything like that, he's like a jokester. He's like a fun guy to be around. He's a player's coach. And so him saying that was definitely him just being his personality of him being known as an offensive mind. And he's just saying, like, if I put any quarterbacks in that, I apologize. Kind of just like laughing. RG took the opportunity to kind of bring it to, <laughs> hey, you must directly be talking about this or maybe you're forgetting this. But this basically, I, in my opinion, RG was kind of making it seem like, this is, you know, going back and having a reason to necessarily feel like you got jaded in a way wow. versus being like, hey, it's been a decade. Like I, at this point, everybody should be able to reflect and be like, it just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Jay you're wasn't online, good enough. And you fight yeah. online. Right. Right. Which, which I guess is good when you have a football podcast. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you which can talk about it. Well, yeah. Online. But I, like at the time, it's kind of like you're kind of building stuff up. There's ways to kind of go about it. You're taking this situation that all you, he always kind of speaks back to that year. It's kind of like no one was good enough back then. Jay clearly wasn't because he got fired eventually. None of us are there. We never had like those glory years. You look back it on years, work. basically like this for this reason, all the yeah. drama that circulated around Washington. <laughs> you know what I mean? That place has been yeah. a, I mean, they've had a mess of like 20 years now, right? Yeah. The Redskins, yeah. it's been like a hard, like it's kind of crazy when you have a bad owner and all of a sudden, sudden the, the whole thing goes to shit yes football players are such unique personalities because i there has to be like a level of delusion that you have <laughs> to succeed no, and i feel like there's so many times you see players like when they get out and i'm i don't rg3 has shown this a couple times i don't know his exact thoughts but like there's a bunch of players when they leave they think they were either way better than they were or they should still be playing or for whatever reason it's like right. very difficult for you to like point the finger at yourself and be like okay i fucked up because of x y and z i wish i would have done x y and z different like the, i feel like the the thing guys always say is like oh, i have no regrets like we had johnny manzel on our podcast like two years ago and we're like hey do you regret anything he's like no and i'm thinking no think shit. about yeah, it there's a couple no, that you, yeah, you might yeah. be able and to like regret. i like johnny like i love like that kind of personality the dudes like baker mayfield who like who like just kind of say whatever the fuck they yeah. want like and they i love that stuff but i if think you, you have to be a little bit tapped in that no regard question, right? but yeah. all of us sit here at this couch right now playing professional sports and we can think of three things right now we wish we had done a little bit different <laughs> there's no <laughs> question, no question. Hey, minimum, at, minimum at minimum 13 maybe. yeah 13. off the top Less first one booze. peds Right, sure. probably should have just not taken supplements. Right, I yeah. probably would have saved myself a couple of dollars. Less booze and less fucking, more sleep for sure. Exactly, that would be one of them. And, and no, dude, matter, no matter how much success you've had, either like you're still gonna think I could have prolonged and made this even better had I done X, Y, and Z. Oh, or that's right, what I, the great like Tom Brady. Yeah. Five years. Tom Brady sits have. there right now, probably laying his bed, going, "Man, if I would have just done X, Y, and Z, I'm no, not, no, no, that's eight, nothing. I not that one guy. Eight of them things. Actually, the first time of his career, he wasn't like the freak like uh nutritionist that he was in the second half. So maybe he does right. think if I've done this from the beginning. You see his face change yeah. from like 2000 to now. You think he's getting Botox? Yeah. Who, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You get Botox? I had it before for sure. No, looks shit. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Brady Botox. does do. I want to look like that. I'm aging like milk. <laughs> I, about you. I wasn't talking about you or you. I was talking about Brady. Will. Yo, he does though. He no, does. No, he had, yeah, he had, he had Taylor, Taylor, all of a sudden, the, he lost, what did you lose? 80 pounds in yeah. three weeks? Oh, and you got phenomenal. new teeth. <laughs> and you got new teeth and Botox. You look great. Yeah, I don't, I don't That's got why Botox. The I've done it before though. I've done Botox before. <laughs> it kind of makes me a little nervous. Is this the TB, is this the TB12 <laughs> diet? You just oh, yeah, yeah. Botox? lose weight, new teeth and Botox. I think it's Botox and no tomatoes. That's the move. How'd you lose all the weight? I was always a guy that had to gain weight. Like I was always like always struggling. I'd have like three meals a day plus like two shakes that were like twelve hundred calories each. Oh. And so when I now started, he now he makes himself throw up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. after every meal we, went to we had those wings. Those things didn't last an hour. Yeah, I was like, stomach, hey, you ate a little too many. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I was in the bathroom for a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the other uh, um, Vrabel, you guys are very close with him. You guys were both coached by him, I believe. Yeah, he was coaching Tennessee this year. They go in the last uh, couple weeks of the season, and he gets honored. In New England, 
Do you think part of his speech had to do with the fact that he got fired? I heard the owner of the, the Tennessee Titans is petty. Why are you looking at me the way you're looking at me? Oh, am cause, I, just because I'm high. Am, am, <laughs> <laughs> was that the reason he got fired? Because I feel like he's a, such a desired coach and, and he fit perfectly there. Yeah, I think they made a mistake firing him for sure. <laughs> what? I don't know what they're laughing at, but I, I thought that was a well-articulated <laughs> no, question. No, that was too. a good question. I, I didn't maybe, okay, all right. Hey, so hey, maybe I saw one. that like that, <laughs> that he made comments that like there's no organization like this organization or something. There's it was a not. legit question. They won so many <laughs> Super Bowls. Like, like, what are you talking about? That's right. They're, I know. No know. one's as good as this organization. Every every 31 yeah, other team should fat. be like, yeah, they're right. That's they're fucking the right. Like, dude, the owner got a rub and tug this past off season. Everyone was just like, well, they got seven of them or six of them. Like, <laughs> yeah. who gives a fuck? Like, no one, talks oh, about yeah. it, no one gives no, a it, shit. Yeah, it was the day of the AFC title game that he then took his jet after and they won. So he's just, yeah, Dog, he's pissing at They don't crap. care at all. But yeah. going back to your question, like, I don't know if that was the reason. I feel like with the Titans, like, who really knows what goes on? Like, I would love to see a peek behind the curtain of, like, what the disagreement was. But just looking at Vrabel, whether you should fire him or not, the answer is clearly no. Like the Titans themselves from like a talent perspective, just were not good enough to be competitive this year. It just was the facts of who you had on your team. And, but Vrabel being in the, being in the locker room, being in the meeting rooms, he's like the number one guy that like helps you understand the rules. He and just gets it. Dude, he just fucking understands it and he beats it into your brain. Like he will literally- He's, he's good at dumbing it down. He'll dumb it down, but he has this thing called Friday tape. And like after the Thursday night game happens, Friday morning, you have like a kind of speed jog through slash like, you know, get a couple of runs in. And the team meeting before, he'll pull up tape from the week before and the Thursday night game and like talk about situations and like watch this guy. Like if he would have, you know, got down earlier, if he would have got out of bounds in this situation, like what kind of situation are we in biz? And he would, you would put you on the spot in front of the oh, whole team. Yeah. They'd have like team. Back, look at the way he's punching. That's why when we do all of our drills, right. those stupid fucking drills every day that you guys say, this is why you punch through right. the pocket. I hear you swipe. guys in the corner. I hear you guys saying how dumb yeah. these drills are, but this is why we coach it. Yeah. I, what do I know? I played 14 years in the league. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, and it's, he just paints it in your brain yeah. for how you're going to win, how you're going to do it. So you never, you never have a lapse in any situation. And he probably the should have hired him. And, and the he Patriots probably, should have hired him. No, well, well, Vrabel needs to run this that that clip right there. The oh, yeah, the, hey, yeah, for real. No, that's you're you're welcome. Welcome. that's pretty fascinating <laughs> yeah. because he, he's the disciple of Belichick, right? He played for the New England Patriots, right? Yeah, he played for the Patriots. Then he co did he coach there? No, I don't think never he coached coached there. He was in. He was in. A, he became Ohio a State linebacker Houston. coach. Yeah, at Ohio State right away. When and he was he was a D coordinator for Houston. They were like the thirty second defense in the league. Like they weren't. A good defense, and he like gets the head coaching job, and it's like everyone is just gets better. Dude, on the Pats, they used to go to him on like the goal line, and he'd catch touchdowns for. Them oh too. yeah, bro, trust me. He, yeah, dude, I imagine the shit talk he has on all you guys for the, that. There was but. a year, I think it was 2019, like halfway through the season, like Vrabel put up a sheet of all the receivers and how many touchdowns they've had in their career, and like they totaled like one less than Vrabel had. Yeah, and it he, was, like, it was almost like the that. show guys. It was almost like that, not this past year, but last year when they oh, were yeah. going through all the different receivers. Hmm. AJ's first year not there. They were, they kept they brought that stat up again how Vray was out uh, catching touchdowns and every receiver put together on yeah. the team. Yeah, but I think yeah yeah you can't fire Vrabes, dude. Like no. he, he is he's from an under like getting his players to understand the game is probably top ten in the league as far as coaches go. Cowboys should have hired him. I've already said it once. What are coaches making in the NFL right now? Is that out there? All that info public? Yeah, yeah. Is think, it big dough? Sure. I it's would like say like mid five to ten a year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, five to ten. Wow, I thought it might even be higher. Some guys. Some it might be. I, I'm not even sure. G, are you looking that up? Like Harbaugh, he was offered ten years, 125 million by Michigan, allegedly. I don't know if that's like a real thing. Like as a re up because he just won it. It was even before the national championship. No, so sure. that's like that's like what twelve a year, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's not going. I don't think it's going to get much higher than that. I think Saban. How much was Saban making? North, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the high marks would be just north of ten. Uh, what's the story? You guys were coming back from London. You guys played over there, and you guys were uh, on the team plane. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we got we got teed up with this. Yeah, one. we didn't we didn't take a boat. We, I don't back know what this. London. I don't we know the, the. And uh, what usually happens? We were talking about this at dinner. Like you go and the, if you the, you leave the day before the game, so Saturday, you sleep, you play, and then you you head back immediately. It doesn't matter how late the game is. So London was not much different, but we got there Thursday. And when you go to London, you have to like, they want you to sleep the whole time. So they give you like an ambient or whatever. You guys get high and they just go to sleep. And then on the way back, they're like, you guys need to stay up because it's night in London or 
whatever, like the time change, I'm not great with time, but <laughs> you fucking going back, you're going to want to be up. So anyway, we go back and it's like, we lost on like a, we went for two at the end of the game and didn't get it. But the whole like front of the plane, all first class, I give it to the players and there's guys like guys are smoking music. It's just nuts. It's like a cloud all around, like yeah, first think, class. Oh, no. It was crazy. Like we had one guy, um, he was smoking a blunt on the plane and this like, <laughs> imagine that in an know, NHL plane. Yeah. Oh. This like a uh, male, gummies male stewardess or male flight attendant comes up. He's like, excuse me, sir. Like you can't, you can't do that. And he's like, oh yeah, for real. Okay. He walks away. The minute he leaves, he's like, man, fuck him. And it lights it back up. <laughs> and the, 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 the flight attendant kind of just sat back in his seat for the next five and a half hours and just let guys go nuts. Oh my God. And it's, he's like, I'm not doing, I'm not trying to stop this. Like I, did, <laughs> oh. I gave my one yeah, charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Please stop that doing it. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't tell me I didn't try. There was like a, but there's like a bunch of gambling that goes on. Like Will's got some crazy stories about the Redskins, but dudes will lose thousands and thousands of dollars oh, yeah. on we'll a flight some, back. Dude, flight what are back. they playing? What are they, what's their car game? Uh, what is it? Boo-ray? Boo-ray. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, NHL's got Blu-ray. like, I guess a bunch of different ones. Snarples. Uh, poker was popular when I, yeah, I was. Yeah, that's what we did in Edmonton. Te- Texas Hold'em, gin, it's the yep. white, seven up, it's seven the down. The whitest yeah, yeah, games yeah. of all time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ones over. Yeah, have you seen yeah, the yeah. NHL? Yeah. Gin, da da da. Yeah, yeah. Our plane is spades and boo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we're there, fucking yeah. rolling out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Dudes are rolling dice in the back. I'm not even fucking making a joke. Like <laughs> that's what they're in the corner. Dude, I'm pretty sure moving the flight out of the way. I'm pretty sure on the Redskins, Trent Williams. Got to say names. You well, I mean, he's. I mean, it's. You made a billion dollars. Look, yeah, he's made yeah, so much matter. money, but six figures down coming off the plane. I mean, there was big money being gambled. That gets gambled, whether it's dice, whether it's uh, spades, boo ray. Did they have the cash, or it was more like a like a like you owe this crew? This crew had the cash. No yeah. shit. Yeah, so they bring like the they bring dollars. like a hundred stacks are they blue on the plane. Light, yeah. oh, are they yeah. blue light special in for any of these, or are they collecting every dollar? Blue light special in hockey is where let's say your teammate owes you sixty. You say, hey, give me forty. Forty's good. Oh, I'm not sure want, there's sure. some of that. I never. Like, I never found myself in that in that type of predicament so <laughs> thank god hey, you were just watching the film on the <laughs> yeah. ipad hey, like having hey, a hey, hey, yeah. away. you get so nervous being asked hey will you want to come play oh i'm not kidding <laughs> dude it's, plays are so funny because like in the back guys will be that's where the gambling is going on and then like right in the middle are like all the guys like glued to their ipads watching glued. every single fucking snap and talking the, to teammates and a little bit further is like all the booze bags sitting in the front Getting after it, playing you know word games and bullshit. The, the ones who skimmed, skimmed who, through who, it, but yeah, they're already done. They're up. Yeah, yeah, they're moving. Like, and there's a psychopath that's sitting <laughs> yeah, in the corner just, and just like stare at their iPad. Just re- uh, redo yeah. every single play over and over Rewinding again. Rewinding shit. Yeah. Uh, fuck if I would have just. Did, that did step. hockey players you guys don't get wild on the plane? Uh yeah. Well, so, like some teams have taken the booze off the planes now. I wonder what that. I wonder what that number is now. I was. I was saying yeah to you earlier that. When I first came in the league, yeah, you could have like, you'd have beers at your seat. You could have as many beers as you wanted, really. I guess, I mean, it, it wouldn't get too crazy. I was in Pittsburgh, so the flighters were short in the East. But you'd have long flights like after a game and guys would get after it. But it, it definitely changed. Um, have you guys noticed a change as far as how like guy, health conscious guys are? Back in the day, it seemed like half the team was getting a six pack. Now it's like all protein shakes. Guys aren't really drinking that much. Like it's kind of like losers. I feel like we Nerds. were like in a in the transition. <laughs> no, that's that. what I'm thinking myself. Think I hope you say something because I was not listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to getting ignored. No, it's no. okay. <laughs> I feel like we were like the years we were in the league was like a transition period from like all like yeah. the guys that would drink 40 Same. beers and five hot dogs, and then that like now it's like super super healthy, and like we were like part of that. Like the older guys would all be putting down 12 beers on a flight, and then like the newer guys would be. Stay a little more healthy. Just the liquors. Yeah, dude's getting crazy now. Like Christian McCaffrey, he comes on the pod and he talks about like him going a little crazy with some sun chips. <laughs> it's like, all right, Christian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. I was in a different place. Like, yeah, yeah, he likes uh, yeah. chocolate chip, what, what, chocolate chip ice cream. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, like, what was some of the, the craziest? Like, was there any guys that had like seven, eight kids running around? Like, like guys that blew crazy amounts of money? Like, what are some of your crazy takeaway stories from the NFL being like, bro, I'm playing with this guy, such and such, and like, He's strolling up in a new Lambo every day, like just like uh, crazy NFL shit. That, that's most of the league. That a rookie starter, uh, the rookie starter pack. Rookie hey, starter guys, pack. spend their dough there, huh? Get like the new Camaro. There's a reason why eighty percent go stuff. broke. Is it? Is that the number still? It's like eighty yeah. percent. So, like go, dude, I, I, I could throw any number right now. Number, like, I don't hey, care if, if it's, it's still, still that number. Like that's crazy at this point, bro. We it I is had like seven to eighty last time. Yeah, I had guys that were like. Uh, undrafted cats or like rookie contracts would ask me for loans. Yes. Like in April. Yeah. Be like, hey, could you spot me a hundred grand? I, I, I talked to a guy who made like probably 80 to 100 million. He was playing with the Minnesota Vikings. I don't want to say his name, but he said when you guys. <laughs> 
I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> oh, shit, did I call that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, so we'll, we'll bleep out the name, but you got You nailed it. No shit. And he said during the lockout one year, he had about 12 to 15 guys on his team. Oh, he told us that on, on the pod. On, on, on oh, that's probably where I'm at. So okay. yeah, just grab yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, so we kind of got rowdy there. But uh, um, he was saying between 12 to 15 guys during that lockout the one year, and they were like, just take the deal, take the deal, because they he had 15 guys on hard money loans. Mm -hmm. A teammate. Now, you just don't see that type of irresponsibility. Maybe one guy. There's uh -huh. been a few NHL stories, but is it? it's, like, so crazy and common in the NFL, isn't it? I feel like there's, like, mul like a multitude of things. Like, maybe, like, I feel like I don't know a lot about hockey, but with football, you could have guys that grew up dirt poor and dudes that, you know, drove Mercedes to high school. Like, there's everything in between as well. With hockey, I feel like everything's kind of, like, yeah. middle to middle upper class. Like, you, it, it's expensive to play hockey growing up. So you have to have some sort of sense of what a dollar is. And also hockey's like fully guaranteed contracts. So you know when you sign whatever deal it is, you're like, oh, I can plan because I know for sure I'm getting every dollar. Is that bottle how you get, yeah, bottle you get two thirds or two maybe thirds one third if you're younger? Yeah, uh, below a certain age. Wow. That'd be insane. But, Bring you in, hey, we're gonna have to. Well, a lot of guys, there's been guys, a lot of NHL guys <laughs> right, tight. who get bought out and then sign with another team and end up making more yeah. than they would have they had they not You guys get the up. double dip, double dip. at all times? If the team buys you out, you're then a free agent, yeah. Let's say you have five years left on your deal. They buy you out for two thirds and they have to pay you over twice the length of that time. So over the next 10 years, you'll get two thirds of the deal. So it'll trickle out. But there's been guys, yeah, they, they signed such a big deal and they get bought out after like two years. So they're going to see, you know, f let's say 50 of the 80 million and then they might sign a, another 30 million somewhere else. But what if then they get bought out of that? Uh, I don't know how many. I, I don't know like, how many. I, I, actually, <laughs> actually there, I believe there was one player recently who had two teams paying him that he wasn't playing for on on bios. Who was it? Uh, I don't remember, but it wasn't for a crazy length of time. I think it was for one year. And I the might double be, buyout. But I might be completely making that out, uh, making that up. But I want to say there was one. Yeah. Uh, could, could be the weed though. Could, <laughs> could be the weed. You got the insurance policy. But you guys out there had to have been in a locker room like I was when when you know you're all getting ready for practice and then like one guy comes in like, hey, this guy's not here today. This like any crazy wild stories involving like teammates or Oh yeah, dude. We had a um a kid that got drafted. His name was Isaiah Wilson. I have no problem saying his name. He was like drafted in 2020. And this kid was like, he was a first round pick, had like I think the 20 the third pick or whatever like that and he would fall asleep in meetings all the time he would he would come drunk like he was just a lunatic and one day during camp like we woke up in the morning like 6 a.m hey isaiah's not here where is he at no idea eight o'clock pre-meetings hit okay he's still not here 8 30 misses practice misses everything the kid was out all night getting after it. I think he played like four snaps all on field goal and then was cut the next year and he was a you say he's a first, first round, round. round dude yes. you, you, buddy how you are you not to, seeing that did you they have to interview him? Did, or how do you not see that? I don't know. I talked to John Robinson about it, and he was like, he his thing was it was COVID, nothing was Zoom, you couldn't do anything in person. He's like, I swear to God, I feel like I would have sniffed him out. But like, I guess oh, like- if the, it was room, to, if you're in the same oh, room. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, same room, like you figure out what kind of guy they are. Because usually at the combine, they have like your unofficials, which is like this giant room. And you kind of just like, you're a number. So my number is like OL23. And you like tag in, and then you have like people grab you, and they have four minutes at a time to know you. And then there's officials where you spend 15 minutes and it's like, it's like GM- speed, like speed dating. For real. Yeah. GM, head coach, and like uh, a psychologist. And you like walk in the room and they're like dissecting you the whole time. Like talking about all your stuff, like whether you had like, you know, assault, theft, battery, and robbery, or you had a whole bunch of stuff going on and then they try to figure out your brain. Like there's much more of an extensive process from a mental standpoint. So your there's product. like- How many how many yeah. teams brought up that list? Not very many. Oh, okay. Not very, I had some other stuff that they wanted to bring up. Instead. Oh, so well, they, what was they, that? They, well, I had a- uh, How did you marry assault. your girl in five weeks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, is, uh, this uh, is like, ding, 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 this is crazy behavior. Yeah, I had an assault case uh, right after the Ohio State Michigan game. And uh, it was like not resolved yet. So they had to like, they were like reaming me over it. And I ended up like resolving it like I'm halfway through my rookie year. So that was like the big thing for me. You think that cost you a couple spots in the draft? Probably. Yeah, probably. What? I had like, there was, I had really when I met my wife is when like all the boozing stopped. All like I got real focused. I was always like really focused on ball. But like the partying part was just a very consistent thing. Like I remember like my rookie year, the Super Bowl was in Arizona. I went like a four day bender. Like slept ten hours maybe in those four days. 
and it was like it was nuts. It was at the Super that. Bowl. Um, at that, the Super Bowl. When you at said the Super Bowl. four day bender. It made me think of Vegas and, and partying. And you guys have became close with. And I hate to change topics, but Dana White. Yeah. You guys are <laughs> yeah, fucking. Yeah, it's story, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just missed out on a great story. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. That was a great story. I think. <laughs> <laughs> He's I'm talking about his legal stuff. You yeah. cut him off right. No, now. I didn't Long want to keep short. I'm still on probation. Oh yeah. Pull up an ankle bracelet. Can't leave. Yeah, um, he was just talking speaking about the of backhands. Yeah. Uh, Dana White. <laughs> um, what's it like hanging out with that guy? You guys are, you guys are going to Red Rocks all the time. Get, yeah. like, you gamble that hardcore? Are you playing 10K a hand? Before last year, I hardly ever gambled. Like, be, like it's 2023. A good, it's a good hobby to take up later, it's in, my, later I, in life. I, I truly can say out loud, I have an issue. Yeah, so we met him in uh, at the Super Bowl last year. And we had him for like 30 minutes and he was awesome. He's like, why don't you guys come out? to a power slap this thing he was doing. So we go out there and usually when I go to Vegas, I'll get like a, a big credit line and I don't really gamble, but I say, hey, I have this big credit line now and they give me a nice suite and comp a whole bunch of stuff. I feel like I'm tricking it in Vegas. And uh, so I get the credit line and I people are saying how big of a gambler he is. So I'm like, hey, I have X, Y, and Z. And he, his eyes get like this big. And he's like, you and me tonight, we're getting dinner and then we're going gambling. And uh, I won like 40K in three minutes time. Like he, like we walked up, he's like, how much do you wanna win? I was like, I've never won more than 30. If I could win 30, that'd be awesome. And uh, we walk up, he looks at the dealer. Cause you walk in at the Red Rocks, there's like this high roller room. And then you go through the high roller room through these two doors. And it's like just one dealer and like five suits just sitting behind them. And you can you can bet literally $25 if you want or $30,000. And there's, you can, it's like a So if you room. wanted to go up to 30, what was he having you hammer each hand? 5K? So there, no, no, no. If I was trying to get 30, the first time we gambled, he's like, we walked in and it was like, he goes, give him 10, $10,000, put it on there. Flip, 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 flip. Dealer gets blackjack. My heart sinks. I'm like, it's over. I'm, I'm going to have to kill myself at the end of this whole thing. Yeah. That's, yeah. And then like four hands later, I have a double, I end up winning 40. Then I've gone, I went back every single month in 2023, I would say almost every single month. And I lost one time. And it was bad, but overall, I'm up like six figures just gambling oh, with Dana. Yeah. And he what's, he ga what's he gambling? So, okay, he so he maxes around? everything. So he's been banned from a lot of casinos. There is that our internet rumor? No, yeah, he no, has. There, there's yeah, he's For like what? a because he has a AP. method in he's which he goes method. and he hammers them, and then he and he walks oh, out. Oh, and yeah. you've oh, you been winning the, that much? I didn't know he actually he's winning had a, like, me a method that won. Apparently, the way that Vegas wins is you get players to come in and they sit there and the longer they sit there statistically, their advantage goes down farther and farther and farther. Dana's whole thing is he's not going to drink. He's going to have a water. He's going to sit there and he's going to hit max bets. So like at Caesars, they'll let him uh, do 75,000 a hand, but let's just say red rocks. He does 30. He'll bet $30,000. If he wins two hands, he's done. He leaves, he gets the car, he cashes out and he goes home. But there's also nights we were there last time we were there. He was down, a million dollars. Yeah, one point two, I think. It was one point two. He lost. A, he was down a one point two million and came back. It was like four a.m. Came back and won ninety thousand, and the next night was down two, and he's just. Isn't that like an overall a losing war. formula though? <laughs> Sounds like you, he's sitting there a while. Not if you bink him. <laughs> if if you bink Vegas and like get out, it's awesome. So you got to get out. Yeah, Red Rocks is great too because they like a lot of casinos. Like obviously, you guys have been. You go there, like you even touch your phone. Like, sir, don't pull out your phone out. None of this, none of that. When you go to Red Rocks, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can have your phone out. You oh, can really? film it. Oh yeah, yeah you can do uh, like literally. Uh, this kid named Steve will do it. Was doing like a cold tub while he was gambling and like beer bongs. <laughs> like we're like we could do beer bongs. You literally anything you want. Last time I was there, I was hungry and I was like, hey, can I get like steak and eggs? And as I'm playing, I'm eating steak and eggs. <laughs> and they can just, you can do whatever you want. It's the um, best. So you guys were going to those UFC fights too. Uh, have you ever gotten starstruck? Like who are you hanging oh, out? Oh, yes. Yeah, who, who are you the rubbing first, out? The, the one we went and met. When they met Trump, Trump? Will, Will no, still shaking from <laughs> you, you dabbed up Yo, Trump? Trump. What's, four, oh. five, what's four or five like? He's a fucking exactly cartoon. What you, exactly what you see. Every clip you see of him is exactly him. <laughs> is he? Yes. We, we walked, dude, we were sitting there. We were what, second row? Yeah. I mean, Mark Wahlberg's right in front of us. Yeah, yeah, he's he's Johnny Knoxville. Will, Will chirped Mark Wahlberg to his face the first time we met him. <laughs> it's one of my more for? prouder moments yeah, yeah, of yeah. all time. We were sitting there like the power slap thing. It was like, it was me, Will, uh, Mark Wahlberg, and Hezbollah. Hezbollah. <laughs> yes, 
The guy that Caleb interviewed? Yeah. yeah. This, this fucking, oh, the little guy? Yes. Oh, no shit. And uh, he was saying something and we're like, oh, when were you, like something about Detroit. And he was like, oh, I was in there shooting Transformers. And we'll go, oh, you were in Transformers? <laughs> and the place well, he fucking. Came, remember, he kind of went out, he kind of went a little off track to talk about how he was out there when he was shooting the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Transformers. And kind of bodied him a little bit. It was I a was nice like, little, oh, it was a snip. And, and? laughs he loved it no 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 he i mean he kind of chuckled he handled it yeah he, he handled he, it he, he took it over the chin and kept moving yeah 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 he kept, yeah because everybody uh, others were laughing oh, that's no. what made me feel like okay that was a nice joke i was like hey, yeah <laughs> bro. Like, nice to meet like, you this oh, yeah. got cut yeah. by the nah, he, he ain't got one of the beer olympics <laughs> <laughs> oh the beer olympics we were chatting about that. That thing just exploded last summer, right? Yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. We you gotta listen. We gotta to, talk about forty five. Yeah, we gotta. Oh gotta, shit! What am I doing? You gotta hear the conversation yeah. okay, that way. Go ahead, tell it good. So uh, we go and we sit down, and sure enough, that that he's just sitting there, and like there's love him or hate him, like forty five is a polarizing fucking oh, yeah. figure, and you're like holy shit, and we're literally from me to this camera where Trump is, and uh, Dana like turns around, like moves somebody out of the way, and like introduces me and Will, and he looks at us, and he goes couple of big, strong, handsome men. And we're just like, fuck yeah, dude. Thank God. Like he's, he was exactly like you would expect him to be. He said it exactly how he says it not, in all the interviews. Not trying to tire pump the boys either. Yeah, eh? yeah. He handled a compliment. Yeah, so hey, right, a couple man missiles here. Love it, boys. Yeah. Dude, so then right after ahead. the main, like right, right before the main event started, I, I hit Dana and I was like, hey, can we get a picture with you in 45? And he's like, absolutely. Like we pop over and we take a picture and then Will's talking to Dana and I'm sitting there like a fucking loser, just like kind of standing by, have no idea what to say to yeah, him. Yeah, what do you say to Trump? Dude, uh, he like turns to me and he goes, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> just like, fuck yeah, dude. You think so? So, <laughs> so he just tire pops. No, just, he goes, you're doing He's great. A savant He's a savant at it, bro. Great. And dude, every single break, every single time there was a lull in the action, there is 40 people that came up to him, didn't lose energy the whole time, would, Talk, would talk to everybody as if they're his best friend. Kind you're of walk away it. going, wow. not bad. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not bad, brother. Yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> I have to they perceive it. you a lot different on CNN, <laughs> man. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, you're a lot I, different. I, I, than see, the guys from CNN would just man. go to a UFC fight. They'd probably be yeah. about Trump oh. after. Yeah, outside of those court documents, you're a hell of a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow, was, that's it was wild. It was wild. What a character. Who, he, who, what other famous people? I mean, you said uh, Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville. That's huge. Uh, dude, that that's, was our childhood. We didn't say what nothing. A, one of my biggest regrets. I Him know, and Vince, uh, Vince Vaughn wasn't a regret. That you was guys joke about your interactions with these people? Is that what you're kind of giggling oh, about? Yeah, dude, because I had this fucking dumb thing that I'm finally getting over where like, if I meet somebody, like if I'm a fan of you, sure, I want to like not be like, hey, hey, I'm a fan. Right. I want to somehow put us on the same level to where hopefully there's a kindling of a relationship. Yes, and we right can away. Lay a foundation. Right away, right away. And Will put it, <laughs> we, were, we were banged up one night at my house and Will was kind of laying it down for me like, bro, like some of these guys, you're just not going to be friends with you. Might as well give them flowers. <laughs> like I'm going to be boys with Johnny Knoxville. He's 50. Like, what is Johnny Knoxville? Like, yeah, I hang not, out, like, go to hey, Napa. He's not going to be FaceTiming you in two days. <laughs> no, he's yeah. going to meet you and be like, I dude. just met a seeker, dude. The guy's nuts. Yeah. We're sitting there and I'm looking like, this is fucking Johnny Knoxville. Like, growing up, I did not watch sports. I like was like into like freestyle motocross and watching jackets. Like, those were my heroes. And he's just sitting there hanging out, doing his thing with his girl. And I didn't say a fucking word to him. And I knew that was like Taylor's. Like I knew he's top three. Yeah, I knew, and I was like, he chickened out. Like I leaned bitch. over to Taylor, and I was yes. like, wow. I go, hey, if you don't ask for a photo or something with him soon, like I'm gonna be like a parent, walk around the chair and ask. But he left d before he left, like during a fight, so the op there was no like downtime. It was like next break. I was thinking I feel in my like head because then at the thing, I'm just thinking like, bro, I I I feel you, but. That's your dude. Like I you know. got to yeah. be like one of your guys. Like your it's, not, it's not like he's going to be like, yeah. hey, oh, that's weird that this person feels this way. It's going to be like, you're probably going to say something genuine. Next time Come you see him, would you like, bring up the first time seeing him in freezing? 1,000%. 1, 1, <laughs> <That's, laughs> yep. Is that what you'd leave with Literally, and try to bond with him? You're going to send him two this months, on like Twitter. Two months DM before that, I'm in Cabo at this party that I have no business being at this party. And yeah. like, it's in the middle of the desert. And who's fucking there? Another top three, Vince Vaughn. Oh, yeah. Vince I met Vaughn, Vince Vaughn. And he said, you know him yeah, personally? No, I met him at a Coyotes game because they, they were playing the Blackhawks and yeah. he's a big Blackhawks fan. And like, I asked for a picture with him in the room and I asked him to do like the fists up because I was a fighter and I felt like the biggest loser because I could see like After. his natural. He's like, he's like, he's like <laughs> 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 he, but that's the, I just, that's the fear. It, it was, yeah, it was just the, the look quickly. I could usually read the energy pretty good. I think he thought I was a peasant, but I got my photo. Yeah, but that's you got what I got my photo. You can get body, body language from people. They can seem approachable or you could tell like that's somebody that does not want to be bothered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like Johnny Knoxville would have just been chilling. Like obviously like probably want 
wanting to talk to you. I know. When Will when Will did the thing where he was like, I'm, if you don't say anything, I'm going to have to go yeah. do it. I, I literally was like, hey, hey, don't, 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 don't. Like, get, like, nervous. Like, a girl seeing a boy that she has a crush on. Like, it was so bad. So you did approach Vince Vaughn? So, yeah. So I'm at this party, and I see, I see Big Vinny, and he's sitting there talking to a bunch of people. But he's not talking to people as if, like, he's having a conversation. Like, there's 15 people sitting there waiting to also say their things that they want to say to Vince Vaughn. Yes. So I think in my head, like, hey, lay back. Do your thing, like, hey, you're tall too. Maybe he'll peek some eyes over. And he, a couple of times, we did catch yeah. eyes. And I was like, you know, <laughs> we're just kindling a relationship here. So I like, finally, I puss out and I'm like, we'll go to the buses to go back to the hotel. And I'm sitting there and the bus is not going to be there for like 10 minutes. I'm like, dude, when are you going to see Vince Vaughn again? Fucking turn around. He's there standing with two guys and one other dude that like I, I had a conversation with earlier. And I was like, perfect. Walk up to the dude, say some bullshit thing that we were talking about before. Look right at him, like, hey, man big fan of you, like grew up, like you're, you're the man essentially. But yeah. I was like very heartfelt, genuine. And he gave me the, Hey baby, I appreciate that, man. Really nice to meet you as well. As our hands are like separating as the touch ends, hit both of his buddies to take one step forward and turn their shoulders to me, make a blockade and walk them away. Oh, you got big time. I got, yes. And bro, I, I didn't, I, I didn't think I it was going to end like I that. Thought I, was I, going, I, I thought he was going to say, Hey, do you want a picture? You did right. the swingers I, voice. I said, oh you did the God. swingers I voice. Know. And I thought that that meant he was going to be like, come on, man, let's have a beer. And he said uh, baby to you. Yeah. He hit me with the baby. Oh, and I was like, fuck. Fuck yeah. well, you said baby. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're yeah, in. I, I, I went home a defeated man. Like I went home and I was like questioning my entire life, writing freehand poetry with a quill. Damn. That's how bad <laughs> life was. And so I, go, I get back, I tell the boys about this and Oof. we end up in Notre Dame, Ohio State this fall. Who's there? Vince Vaughn. We know Vince Vaughn's going to be in town because he's a big Notre Dame fan. We hit up Steve Byrne. We're like, yo, we know he's in town. Just let him know that we're here. We would love to meet him. In my head, I'm thinking redemption. I got Lose Yourself by Eminem playing in my head the whole entire thing. I'm <laughs> Steve, legit Steve, Steve, Steve is Forgetting. also, Steve is also aware friend. of what happened with Taylor. And he's like, ah, oh, you just guys, yeah, you I guys hit him up. that to me. Like that ain't, that ain't how yeah, it goes down. That's not how it is. So we're at this, we're at a tailgate before, like kind of doing our like fall tour thing. And Steve said something about like, hey, I'm putting, like, no, he didn't even say anything. He just puts us in a group chat with Vince Vaughn. Oh, nice. And he's like, hey, uh, this is the Vin guy he's like, time. Vince, this is Taylor Lewan and Will Compton, blah, blah, blah. They're at the game. And Will and I, I'm across, I'm like taking a piss or something like that. Well, I came, up, I came up and I go, check your phone. <laughs> yeah. And I, oh yeah, then I walked away. Yeah. And we literally send the same exact text at the same exact time. Nothing happens for a while. Service is bad at, at South Bend, Indiana yeah, yeah. though. So finally he texts back. We get to the field. We see him and it's legit like, Wedding crashers, Vince Vaughn, hey, hey, oh, oh, we're having a fucking time with him. He's like, we're going to go in the locker room. You want to come in the locker room? I love if you came in the locker room with us right now. We're having a great day. Like, he's just being that he's fucking on. guy. No. He's on. He's loving it. He's talking to everybody, shaking hands, big belly laughs. <laughs> we're on the sideline with him, and he's like, leans well, we up. We weren't even, we were We were back. We were kind of like standing back because there's a lot of people yeah. on the sideline. Proud enough. So we're Probably like, doesn't hurt that a few people are shouting out your guys' names, too, there. Oh, for sure. Like you well, talking yeah. like pregame, like some of yeah, the athletes. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm sure people were there being like, hey, it's the busting guys where yeah. like, he's like, oh, these guys must be somebody. Kind of yeah, helps yeah, yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Steve probably helped big time. but And we were he, with Shane and Caleb. That's right. And he, uh, that's right. Big dog. Yeah. 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 Why, like, oh, you're Gale, saying Caleb? Gale, Gale? No, Gale, you, got, yeah. you got Caleb there too. So, you know, he's getting love. Like, uh, Shane, obviously, he's like he's the biggest comedian. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's like the we're, we're like in that crew. So we're standing there. We're probably like three rows back and like standing on the sideline. And Vince is like in the front. He like looks back. He sees me and Taylor. He's like, hey, y'all two want to come up here? We're like, hell yeah. And then that's where, you know, we're standing there. We're talking the game. And we're like, you know, Notre Dame goes for it on fourth down when they shouldn't have. They should have took three. And we're all just agreeing like, yeah. they should have took three there. And he's like, yeah. And then he 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 says like, you know, they're, Notre Dame's backed up one time. They're trying to come out. He's like, hey, we should should, you know, do a flea flicker here or something like that. Like we're like talking ball. Right. One time he's like, Tom Osborne wouldn't do that. And I'm just thinking, does he know I fucking went to Nebraska? Yeah, if he knows does he how, know, does he know? If, if he's, is he, he saying, saying that random? Or is he just saying Tom Osborne? It was like the greatest comeback story for another, a second chance yeah. of all time. Rights, man. Like a yeah. second impression, like Vinny probably knew. He just knew he let me down so bad that he like <laughs> had to come. He came yes. with the fucking I would have been shocked if it, if that was the end of the story and he was dick because you just imagine him as exactly what you just described. I'd be what broken a too. I, I would legit like Vince. Yeah, he's one of the is, heroes. I, yeah, I yeah. couldn't have ended the pod the way that you said the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that Can't was too sad. We needed a happy ending. That was Who, too sad. 
Okay, so one of the most oh viral things in the NFL this season was something that you created or you responded you created, to. Yeah. Will, yeah. Will, restart we, 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 yeah. will restart on this. Will restart on this. No, it was a four. It was a four. <laughs> civil war in America. <laughs> Okay. Will wants to go back a couple Let's hundred years. Let's slow down a little bit, Biz. Oh, wait, pump the brakes here. <laughs> no, but there was a, it was a former Steeler player. Yeah, Rashard Mendenhall. Yeah, and he sent out the original tweet about he it. He sent out the original tweet, just shitting on basically like average white people who talk about football in the media, like I'm better than your goat. Like we should have a a, a white versus black Pro Bowl. They should they should cancel the Pro Bowl and just do white versus black guys. Like I'm better than your goat. Like had that tweet come out. Not a bad idea. So that was going nuts in the morning. And cause we were doing bussing and Jack's like, Hey, like there's a, there's a tweet going viral right now. And they show Richard Mendenhall's tweet. And we kind of talk about it on the bus, kind of laugh a little bit, but also thinking like, man, do, do we need to have this? Like? Do, do we, yeah. Do we need to have this real do we reaction right this? now when, we, yeah, when we're just hearing it? Let's reach and out to my PR person. Fortunately, since it was Delaney and not necessarily me and Taylor, like we might've handled it a little bit differently. Oh, yeah. You kind of felt like I was going back and forth with Delaney a little bit, but afterwards, when I saw how crazy it was going and I saw the engagement more so being like funny and humorous yeah, everyone, versus yeah, being real devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's kind of laughing at it. And so I thought to myself like, oh, I think people would really mess with me putting together this yeah. all white, all black team, like in totality with the all white team. And so I just did it and I sent it to a group chat that's like me and a bunch of my old teammates where I'm like the only white dude. I'm like, hey, what do y'all think of this video? And they laugh, they are like, oh, we we mess with it. Seems like something you put out there. The only thing I think about is the the Harvard joke. That was pretty wild. <laughs> wild. And so I I <laughs> threw it out there, just thinking, all right, well, I got to figure out if I know where a line is at some point. And you kind of just throw it out, thinking it'll probably be big, but maybe have mixed reviews. And it just hey, explodes. heart rate it's pumping explodes. as you press send. Oh, yeah. Yes, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's heart pumping, rate's pumping like, on the first that reactions first, after that. That first ten minutes of you kind of hitting the scroll <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, once it says sixty yeah. minutes left to edit, and you're just thinking, all right, fucking. Yeah. Here we go. Buckle in. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and here we yeah, go. Yeah, but it was I a, immediately sent it to Taylor. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, all right, well, we're about to see what the reaction is. It was um, amazing too, because I, 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 I mentioned, I, I saw the original tweet. I'm like, oh, that would be a, they, they, we'd get drummed. The white squad <laughs> would get drummed. <laughs> yeah. And then your video comes we, out. You're, list, we, you're, yeah, listing, we, we you're listing off the, the offense. And I'm like, this isn't a bad team right here. And then all of a sudden you get to defense, you get to secondary. We don't have anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Although there is one kid coming up. That kid from Iowa. Uh, is it is it Cooper Cooper Dijon? Uh, He's going to so, be a first rounder, right? So yeah, was the, we had a potential was, first rounder out there. Boys. Although exaggerated the first tweet, were they correct? There's no way that the whites would beat the blacks. Wait, dude, do, do what? Hey, who am I thinking would win no, the game? I'm like, saying do I think is, we got a shot? Uh, on the we I, cover. Okay, <laughs> we, what's yeah, the spread? Yeah, we're 27. Here's my stipulation. I wasn't even trying to make a joke there. Well, like, well, no, I know. I'm trying, okay, I'm trying right. to figure out if you were asking we're if plus I... Plus nine and a half, maybe. I'm, no, I'm, I still feel the same digits. way after 20 putting the we're, rosters we're, out? No, I'm saying like, who do you think would win? <laughs> who do I think would win? Yes. I think we got a real shot. Yeah. Okay. I, I know I know. coaching staff. We can fill out a great coaching staff. And what are the parameters? Are we playing in two weeks' notice? I told Delaney. I said, Cram it for the yeah, exam. I said, well, yeah, well, <laughs> our team would be prepped. You might be out there doing a little, you know, messing around a little bit. You never know. You guys are, are going to have guys fighting the day of the game on who should be playing because you have way too much depth. That's true. We kind of know what's going down right when we show we up. Know our, we know it's our like, roster. We got to hit the ground running. We got to find every edge <laughs> right. possible. Got to have a good first half. Yeah, and defensively, like, we went back and forth on it, but you got to you either rush three and drop eight and you have to play four underneath four deep you can't play any man to man you can't allow any of the corners of secondary back there to be locked in on Tyree Kill Tyree going down the field yeah. 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 you just have one he, safety 45 yards deep at all times yeah, at like, all just time. knowing, a, like, a Tyree Kill you gotta, call, you gotta he, cover east to west yeah. yeah and then you get you know you gotta get TJ Watt yeah, Bosa, both Bo Bosa both brothers. Both Bosa. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they'll be, you know, they'll be hungry. Oh, yeah. Hutchins, Hutchinson. <laughs> don't, hey, don't, those guys that's, are. That's a statement game for them. <laughs> Between my. <laughs> <them. laughs> yeah. so we're we we staying on business right game. now. Yeah. Hey, on the offensive side of the ball, it's three yards in a cloud of dust. Like, you got to yeah. fucking, you, you got a time management. Yeah. You got to keep the ball out of their Help hands. Your teammates up. Yes. yes. Got to be outstanding on special teams. Get him inside the 10 yard line at all times. That's a must. Yeah, it's a must. And then a couple of gadget plays here and there. You got to fuck with a couple of motions, the annex, couple of shifts. And a creation of Puerto Rico. Yeah, you're taking yeah. three guys from one side to the other side. They're fucking doing checks. Maybe they don't you got to hit a double them. reverse. Guess what? We're going right up the gut again. That's, again. that's the move.
That's the only way. You got to run the football and control the clock. Got to take, you got to, the, uh, the over under. You guys have thought about is, this a lot. <laughs> I'm sure the totals on that game would be like 75. We could hit the under on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'd be plus 24 and a half. And the over under would be 75. Yeah. yeah. Uh, boys, um, that about wraps the first one up. We're going to have to get you on again. Yeah, I know we were all over the map, but that's what happens when you get the boys together and a little toki toki beforehand. It's just, we were on planet Zoltan, just snapping it, <laughs> snapping it around. So yeah. this is number one. Busting with the boys brand. You find them anywhere. You listen to your pods. Watch watch you guys on YouTube and you're killing it. I mean, so congrats on all the success. We got to do this like twice yeah, a year. Yeah, once maybe. in a while. Half two times a year. Just I like catch it. Up. This That'd is a awesome. squad right here. Boys. All right, boys. Yeah. Oh, by the way. Sir Sam Baker. He went into, went into Barstool office. And like you played a pro sport, like people forget, like you won, people, you won that survivor did. competition. And I, yeah, I felt like I was slept on going into yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, buddy, do you not know that I was like on a team? I was like grinding out every day, watching the playbook, never you reading the lay, these people. You got to lay low though. You can't let them know that stuff. Like, yeah, let them think all that stuff. Like I'll try to find my, try to find my ways in here. These people who never played sports, like they just don't know. That's just, <laughs> no, no, you know, they don't. It's something you can't teach, right? You, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm you, with you. I'm you with said you. to me on the I phone, the like, boy, we played sports. It's like, you just can't teach it yeah can't teach it just got to know a little bit different before we sign off this whole thing can you tell your fans that both of you will be participating in beer olympics next year someone's coming out of retirement well i'm, I'm sober right now but off season 100 i'm in it's june you're june i'm coming i'm coming you guys got to come to beer Olympics. Yeah. sure yeah. are we teammates would yeah. you want to be teammates? okay yes yeah. i would like to i think i think me and you could do some damage i think we could do some damage yeah hockey boys can drink and even Ooh, if i'm taking but, time off can you compete though oh buddy I don't even know what the games are, but I think I'm going to need you to drink beforehand, though. You can't go into beer. Olympics I'll go. Hey, I'll sober. go into beer Olympics oh, dead brother, sober. Trust me. Don't. Hey, don't. I will, you don't need any more than what goes down. No, I will two wait. Warm beers. You got to warm. You no, I'm not saying beer. like that day, but like you, you can't not drink for a I year and then go to beer Olympics. I'll do it. That's. I'll you do it. Hey, no may, stamina. Maybe I'm puking in the corner and it's good content. You got to warm up. You got to get ready. That's going to be your first time drinking. I'll save it for the beer Olympics. Oh, you're done. Go. Yeah, okay. You're done. No, I'm not. There's We're gonna no have to have make sure. Hey, I'll, a hey, I'll get. A, I'll get a little. I'll get a no couple. Uh, no PEDs. I get a couple. No, no PEDs. PED. Well, no you can't PED take any fucking Vinny Lanos. You can't be doing the, you, those little sniffer boys. Yeah, a couple. You jump those things. You have forty beers. You take sober one up. of those little bumps. You're stone cold sober. S sober again. It's like nothing ever happened. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I, so I hear. So I hear. I've never tried Allegedly. it. All right. Thank you. Signing off. Great job, boys. All right, before we go any further, here's a few words from our friends at ZipRecruiter. According to Forbes, January is the hottest month for hiring, and hunting for top talent is no easy task. If you're currently hiring, you can probably relate. It's challenging to find qualified candidates. That's why you need ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology finds the right people for your roles fast. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash SC. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's smart technology starts showing you candidates whose skills and experience match it. To encourage top candidates to respond to your job post even sooner, ZipRecruiter lets you send them a personal invite to apply. And as you rate candidates, ZipRecruiter sends you more of the ones you like from the thousands of new job seekers who join the site. This month, find the talent you need to fill all of your roles with ZipRecruiter. See for yourself why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get quality candidate within the first day. Just go to this exclusive web address right now to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash SC. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash SC. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Big thanks to the bus with the boys, guys. I still got to sue Will Compton, man. I think he broke a fucking vertebrae in my neck when we filmed that Chevy EV commercial back in the day when he fucking put me down hard. I feel like I was doing a WWF commercial. But either way, we mentioned Mark andre Flurry earlier past Patrick Waugh, uh, second on the all-time wins list. But is he going to get moved, Biz? He does have a full no-move no clause. It's the last year of his deal. He basically can determine his fate. I don't think Minnesota is going to make the playoffs this year. You think he ends up somewhere? And if so, where, Biz? Uh, I think, uh, I think that Colorado should pick up Mark Andre Fleury. Love that. Um, right okay. now they've been talking about the amount of, that Gorgiev has been playing and it's a bit of a concern, which is crazy. Cause I think he's on pace to maybe play 67 games where back then, I mean, you, you know, talk about Patty Waugh, even when flowers stepped in, it was very common for these starting goalies to play 65 to 70 games. I think Brodeur might average or over 70 
throughout his career, which is absolutely fucking insane. Crazy. And the only way that you're going to break the wins to, uh, record. But I think that it would be nice for them to have a little cushion. Cause if you go back to when they won the, the, the cup more recently, Kemper went down and was it, uh, is it Francois? Is that how you say his last yeah, name? Abel Francois, yeah. Who had a great uh, regular season there. He was a fan favorite. He stepped in during that Edmonton series and he played awesome. So you're going to need that, that type of one, uh, a one B situation. My favorite saying going, and some people might be saying, well, you're contradicting yourself. Cause you said, move on from Var Varlamov. Well, I always fucking contradict myself, so shut up. Um, <laughs> L.A. should maybe give a call on Flurry because I don't know, like that. The, the, the whole team's struggling, but they don't really have much goaltending going on. So I don't know if he'll definitely get traded, though, dude. Because it's probably the last year of his career, right? Which would make you think he'd want to get traded, but he might just be like, all right, I'm, I'm, I've, I've been doing this rat race for a while now. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just ready to just finish out this year and, and enjoy my last few months. Now there could be a, a side of him who wants to go on one more run, but does he want to go somewhere where he's not even definitely the starter either? It's just like his whole family's been moving around so much. I don't know how it's going to play out, but in the end, it'll be up to him. I think, I think when you're getting traded near the deadline though, you just think about, Hey, Worst worst case Ontario, I'm gone for another three three and a half months. I know, Since, but keep the keep the family in mini, keep him in school there, and then you just go on the run. So I I think it's a a, a no brainer, and I think that Billy Garen, if putting him in the right situation, he would for sure uh, waive that. And I think at this time, teams are fucking getting so desperate. I bet you can get a, like a top end second round pick right now for him. And and who knows, maybe some teams give him a little squirrely and give up a first rounder for him. That's how desperate some teams are in the goaltending category. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a, uh, pretty much a 180 on how, how teams have felt about goaltenders. She had this for sure. Uh, one guy who is definitely not getting traded at the deadline, Steven Stamkos, uh, Tampa Bay captain, uh, his GM, Julian Breesbaugh poured cold water all over that trade speculation. Uh, he said, it's popular. It's interesting. A frequent topic. Who's going to get traded? Who won't get traded? Steven Stamkos isn't getting traded. You can all write that. Steven Stamkos is not getting traded. All right, nice. So we can put that one to bed, and we're going to put that to bed right now. Uh, I don't blame him. Why would you do that now? The guy's been their franchise leader in goals, points, games, all that shit. Would make no sense to trade him right now, especially with a fucking another cup run coming. Uh, we got some shout-outs for the boys out there. Uh, how about Owen Tippett? This goal he scored the other night. Probably oh. number one for the goal he had candidate. Just turn around, whip a snap, a backhand, and just... Uh, Unreal fucking goal. Even Tortorella gave him props, which he doesn't like to do too much, I don't think, at the mic for players. But how about the trade? G, actually, great point uh, G brought up. Let, like, to revisit that trade, Philly sent uh, Claude Giroux, who was a pending UFA, a fifth and 24. Uh, two guys who are currently playing in Europe. Uh, Tippett, a third and 23, which landed prospect uh, Denver Barkley in Florida's first in June, unless they crash and burn, and it becomes a top 10 pick. I mean, he broke out last year, 49 points, 77 games. Only making a, a million and a half this year, due for a big raise this year. But I mean, people uh, picked on Fletcher a lot, with, but he fucking nailed this one, though. He crushed it, and and I think Torts made a good point in saying he has he has a chance to be a really special player. Uh, probably a guy who who's actually looking back will look back and say he's really happy and lucky he had Torts as a as a coach at a young age, teaching him like the correct way to play. And like you've seen it a lot with guys he had in Tampa back in the day, and Vinny LeCavier and Brad Richards, and guys at the beginning who who have offensive talent and speed and skill, but need to know how to play a 200 foot game torts has done a lot with him and you've seen some of the speed bursts this kid has they've been some of the highest ones calculated with this new technology the nhl has where he's busting down the wing a lot of times he's beating guys wide and on a play like the other night he kind of went to cut in and against dallas and decides to denny savard spin around and shelf it backhand so i think the red hair just adds to the magic of him in philly and and he's a maniac playing his balls off so that was a hell of a trade looking back now absolutely you know it, it was tough for him in florida too with three uh, the three seasons he was there he had three different coaches it's tough for a young kid to you know make an impression on that situation he certainly blossomed in philly uh jumbo joe no surprise here his number 19 will be retired uh next season by the san jose shocks absolutely no brainer there soon enough he'll be in the hall of fame as well shout out to jumbo joe uh we want to congratulate uh, tyler ennis he retired he had a 13 year nhl career spent the last two seasons over in europe his last season was in germany uh, he suffered a neck injury back in November playing for Mannheim. So I uh, made a statement, said he was grateful for everything that, that he went through. 
his whole career. Uh, he's retired. He's all done. So uh, I, I don't know him winners. personally, but I have heard so many good things about this Mer guy. Merles and him are boys. I heard he's a funny bastard. I would love to get him on the show to, to talk to him and, and uh, hear about some of these antics he was up to during I, his career. Yeah. There you go, Tyler. Open invite. Uh, just a quick uh, get well to our buddy, Alex Colon. You know, we don't do this with every injury, but he's been on the show a bunch. Big friend of the program. He fucked up his knee. He's got to get arthroscopic surgery. So just want to send our best wishes out to Killer Man. Hope All right. I got a quick one, too, just to throw in with Pasha yeah. in here. I love Pasha. I hate him, but I love him. <laughs> we should also, in honor of him, mention the Rangers are horrific right now. So <laughs> I don't know if Rangers fans want to reach out to us. And we've had our beefs, obviously, everyone on this show with Rangers fans. But what's going on with them, folks? Maybe you know, just hop into the comments of the YouTube. Hop into the comments on Twitter. And Shesterkin, there's an issue going on there. And I don't know what exactly it is, but Pasha made the point. I think they've won two of their last nine or something like that. Did I not say this in the preseason? Well, I know, but I then, said you, that, switched, then no, you switched. Then you switched back no, no, to no, saying no. that they I were said, for realsies and they're going to win the I, cup. I, I said that he was going to get sick and tired of saving their bacon, and it looks like he's sick and tired of saving their bacon. And, and they've they, and they've been healthy for the most part. That's the thing. I know Heedle's out, and it was interesting. I saw a picture come out with Heedle and Yarmar Yager. He's skating back home in the Czech Republic. So apparently, they let him get home to get to get healthy from his concussion back to the Czech, which is a little surprising. But I think maybe you're looking at like let's have him be comfortable around his family and let him take the long flight there and back but it was kind of cool to see that at least now that he's skating again again it's with the eggs it's kind of the reverse of your situation with the oilers when i stay away from them i'm not aggravating their fan base they take a dump yeah, i jumped yeah, on yeah. their bandwagon last year during playoffs i thought when they added patty kane they were oh i was double wristing them and all of a sudden pfft, they lost to posh's yeah. devils start of the year I was all over them i got the fan base riled up they were humming out of the gate I haven't said a word to them. I've been all over the Islanders, and look what happened. So, hey, Island, or Rangers fans, reach out to me. I could start shitting and, on you guys again. And they're, they're leading the Metro. And, yeah, Zabeniad, but, like, I hear Rangers fans are, like, talking about his low goal scoring, but he's still producing. Like, I don't think, like, that's, like, the biggest worry on that team right now. But it, it is Rangers weird. fans are giving it to him, though, right now. I know, but, like, figure some. Give it to Shesterkin. Right now, it's just Sturkin's more at fault than fucking Jabeni Yad is. I just said his name like an absolute moron, but you know what yeah. I'm saying. I don't know why they're and giving Quick, it to him. And Quick's been unreal, man. 9-4-2, and two, uh, two, four, six goals against 9-1-3 save percentage. And this is a guy, I think everybody thought he was probably going to retire over the summer. And he's kind of been keeping the Rangers afloat a little bit. He had an amazing uh, video, video tribute. they, they yeah. gave to him in L.A. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, they, they lost 2-1. And I think, you know, Quick, Quick. He had his guy, and they they couldn't they couldn't end up pulling that one out. But the video was awesome. The guy narrating was talking about the greatest goalie to ever wear a LA Kings uniform. Kind of shocking. He never won a Vesna, right? And all the years he had, yeah. but playoff time, man, when they were around, and they could have won a couple more if it wasn't for the Blackhawks those years. It was those two back and forth for four or five years. It felt like so. Just a cool thing. And when I dog on the videos that people get when they come back, that is not somebody I'm talking about. That's well deserving, and it was an amazing run for the Kings with Jonathan Quick. He did have a con Smythe though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. He, yes, yeah. he did. No Vesna, yeah. but he did had he the cons. Of, did he have both of them? No, Justin no, he, Williams. Twenty fourteen. Uh, yeah, Justin Williams, Williams was the other one who won it. Crazy, yeah. eh? Mister Game fucking, Seven. He was unreal in both either, either way though. Both yeah. of those fucking playoff runs. Uh, all right, a couple last notes here, uh, boys. We we mentioned earlier. I was down uh Charleston, South Carolina. I just flashback. I was down September twenty twenty two. Uh, I filmed scenes from a movie with our, our buddy Jeff Zucker. Uh, I met him out when we were in Denver for the the Western Conference Finals. And you know, guys, we meet a lot of you know a lot of people on the road and have business guys. And hey, I got this, I got that. And, and he came over and, and introduced himself, and, and he said, hey, "I'm I'm going to be working on a, on a movie, a, a small budget movie. I'd like to have you involved." And hey, here's my email. And dude, that Monday, he had the script, the contract, all the all the legalese, and. I asked around about him and everyone said, this guy's aces. He's a, he's a fucking dynamite person. Great guy. And I, I filmed my stuff a year and a half ago. And then we had the cast and crew screen and I flew down to Charleston this week. And boys, I, I can't fucking wait for you, for you guys to see this movie. You know, this isn't like a student film that like 12 people are going to see. It's going to be on Amazon, most likely uh, streaming. And, you know, I did it back then. I filmed tons of takes. You never, you don't know what lines are going to make it. You don't know what, what scenes are going to be in. And and what you've seen uh, once upon a time in Hollywood, right? The Tarantino. Movie. Are you comparing it to yeah. that? Right? I love this. No, 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 no. One, no one scene. Remember, remember the scene when when uh, Margot Robbie goes to the movie theater to go see the movie she's yeah. in. Yes. Like, so and then and then when she has the scene and everyone laughs and she looks around, 
I, I know what that feels like now because like the shit, the couple of scenes I was in, I, everyone around me was laughing at what happened and it's the fucking best buzz ever, man. Like to have like some goofy shit you did to be on screen and have everyone around you laugh. That's exactly what I felt like Margot Robbie in that movie. And that's one tiny part of it. Like everybody involved is, you know, it was one professional actor, I think of the whole movie. And it reminded me of like a 1990s independent film, like the, the look, the feel to it. And there's never been a B league movie. I think this is going to be a huge hit. Uh, it's got a lot of hot. It's fucking hilarious. And boys, I can't wait for you to see it. I, I was very happy with how it turned uh, out. I know Jeff Jacobs. Jeff saw Jacobson saw it. He said you were tremendous in it. You were, were you essentially the lead of the movie? Like, did you have the most scenes of any person? Uh, I was the second build person after, after on the, the credits. Uh, uh, yeah, on so the, like yeah, on the, what do you, what yes. do you call oh, the poster of the movie? You're front and center already. Yeah. And, and like when it comes up, you know, the, the opening credits, the late game, and it's like starring, you know, Alex Royce, and then like I'm the second name to come up. I was like, shit, my pants Holy when I started. Shit. So it, it, yeah, it, it's fucking wild, man. And like I said, it was a ton of fun. And, and also, too, like the collaborative thing that, you know, there's a hundred people there that behind the camera, in front of the camera that just worked on this thing. And you, you know, you don't know how it's going to turn out and it come out. And, and everybody was so happy. And like you guys know Jeff Soccer. He's just an ace. So he, ace his family team. owned the South Carolina Stingrays. He's got, I think when he, when yes. they owned it, uh, Bednar was actually the coach there, right? Yeah. And I think yep, they yep. they have since sold majority of their stake. There might be still minority owners, yeah. but uh, yeah, still, he was the one who was kicking yeah. tires on doing that uh, project in Colorado with the ECHL team, doing one in yeah. Colorado Springs, calling it the Bighorns. I still think he's trying and trying to get in with that one arena there. Is that what the arena is called? That one arena? Yep. So yeah, he's been so good to us. And Ari, I'm glad that you got to connect and, and continue your, uh, what's the what's the term the, the, when you're an thespian, actor? Thespian. Your thespian. Your, your, your thespian ways. So this, this Shorzy yeah. thing has really propelled your acting career again. Dude, it, it, it really has. I mean, I can't thank Jared enough, but like, it's crazy because I mean, just figure if Colorado didn't go go to the fucking that that conference finals, or if we didn't go on that trip, I might might have never met him, and things wouldn't have fallen down in this way. Uh, but it, it's it's wild, dude. I just it just to look up and fucking see a poster with my name on it, it. It was a ton of fun, and yeah, I hope it leads to much more. And yeah, Shorzy season three, that's gonna be coming. Couple as well, of clicks so. for RA. Uh, the Atta thespian, boy, right, the thespian, Margot Robbie Thanks, comparison. I, I love, love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, no, just that scene. But what's good too, like this, it's not like, you know, Chorzy, I'm obviously playing like an exaggerated version of myself. And the town, you know, I, I look, I'm a ghost. You don't see me. I obviously play it up for laughs. But this one was like, yeah, I really like had to be like a, a character and like kind of had to, had to dig in and like fucking, and I sound fucking like pretentious as fuck, but like act. I had to go like and be like a, a different person, man. And uh, to see the response, it, to see the response, it was a buzz I never had before. And I, I can't wait for you boys and the audience and everyone else to see it. But I love we that. Can, we can move along. I'm, I'm gloating. Well, a little bit too much. when it Speaking is available, out. you can re-mention it uh, and let everyone know. Oh. Let everyone know where they can watch it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's going to be a, a more formal premiere coming up, and it's definitely going to be streaming. We will keep everyone abreast. So uh, I'll shut up about it. All right, boys. I'm probably gloating a little bit too much here, but we do have a, a final note here. Uh, we have a, a huge thank you and a, and a huge goodbye to a, a good friend of ours, uh, Erica, uh, CEO at Barstool. She has left. She she came to Boston. She she kicked ass. She took games. She did what she had to do. Uh, she brought this company to a level that uh, nobody would have foreseen way back in the day. And uh, it, you know, what's it? A rising tide lifts all boats. Well, she was that tide who lifted all of us. And uh, we want to give her a, a fail out a goodbye. I'll give it to you, Wit. I know you guys want to. Uh, give her a few words as well. Yeah, er Erica's an amazing person. And, and just her talking about what happened to Barstool when she came there and how I think they had like exceeded their five year plan within like 18 months or something absolutely crazy. And just talking about the, the dream Dave had and how when she came in and how it kind of went above and beyond what they even could have imagined. So it kind of makes sense. Once Dave bought back the company, I think Erica probably realized that she'd move on at some point, considering that they'd kind of done what they'd hoped to do and then some. So without her, who knows where we're at. And the coolest thing for us was that from the time I, I met her and you, you're the same biz, like she always believed in, in our show and our brand so much. And I think anyone out there with a job will tell you when 
when your your boss is the one telling you that you can do this, you guys can be even bigger. Like th- this is just the beginning. Like just it gives you an extra motivation and extra confidence in terms of believing in what we could do. So without her, we're not nearly where we're at. Barstool isn't where it's at, and she's just an amazing person that we want to wish the best to. You couldn't have picked a more perfect person to take over as CEO. Looking back, um, just to kind of piggyback what you said, like she never once put a governor on spit and chicklets. Like everything that we asked for in order to try to move forward and excel and, and be better, uh, she gave it to us. Uh, she's a bulldog, like even to the <laughs> even to the point where sometimes, you know, we would be in meetings and you know we would get into it, and it, it's. You know, I'd never like seen anything like that before. So I've she, never seen someone bark back at you oh, like Erica would. And it, it was, was the best. And it was awesome. And it made me love her more. And it made me realize that she should be the woman in that position. So uh, we can't thank her enough. I don't know what's next for Erica, but wherever she goes, she's going to help bring them to the next level, much like she did for Barstool and and helping us. Because we we talk about it all the time. Like I don't think there's any Pink Whitney without Erica nope. and, and Deirdre Lester as well, who, who ended up moving on. Like you know, FDNY, it, NYPD played a huge role. Chicklets Cup played a huge role. Every big thing we've done, she's been right there every step of the way, encouraging us, being like, this can be bigger. We can make more money off this. Let's go all in on this, which is like Wit said, it's so encouraging. Well, that that too, right? Like these people who have helped solidify and, and helped us open up these channels to do Chicklets Cups or whatever it may be, like she was part of that hiring process in order to bring those people on bar stool. So those are resources that we were using from them. And it goes even farther to like us wanting to do, you know, more sandbaggers, like bringing on Pasha full time, uh, f- you know, fish and Sean, like adding these types of players to our team and, and, and really allowing us to get there w- was all part of Erica's help. And we love her. And, uh, you know, we're, we're a little sad that she's leaving, but, uh, you know, every good thing has to come to an end. And I don't know where she's going to end up, boys, but uh, they got a good one. She'll crush it. Yeah. She'll crush it. So thank you. All right. Uh, well said, boys. And uh, next time we talk to you, we are going to be in uh, Toronto, Ontario next week. We're going to be bouncing all around. We're going to actually have a, a day late next week. Our podcast will be dropping Wednesday next week. But the more the merrier. We'll have some good and, stuff. So. And the reason for that is we're going to be recording on Tuesday all together. We're going to be at uh, the Gretzky's basement this pop-up they've launched. Uh, If you want to go pre-order or pre-register your spot there, I mean, it's filling up quick. I don't even know if they have any spots available, but we're going to be there on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I think it's going to be open till the end of the week. And uh, it's going to be a ball, guys. It's going to be a shit show in Toronto. Then we got King's Tap on Friday too. King's Tap, if you can't make it there. 5 to 6.30 p.m. That's at 100 King Street West in Toronto. We'll be there at Pink Whitney Party. It's going to be an absolute blast. Uh, and a live show too. <laughs> oh, we're doing it. Yeah, we're doing baby. it. With we, special boys? guests. We? We're not going to tell you who's going to be popping out, but it will nope. be a gong show. All right, guys. Talk Thanks for listening. Love you all. Love you. Peace.